Welcome back to Faith in Film episode four. Wow, it's like the most professional intro I've ever done. It lasted all <laughs> two seconds. <laughs> Faith in Film episode four. Dude, this uh, was a very interesting movie for me. First off, it's the first black and white movie I've ever watched. Ever? Maybe not. I, I mean, <laughs> The Wizard of Oz starts in black and white. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's another. But... Uh, Wait, you've been against black and white movies all this time without having watched them? Just in principle. Just, you haven't even watched them? And you don't <laughs> like them? That's You thought you so, had like all this expertise in black and white no, movies? No, 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 no. Just you just don't like the idea of them. No, I'll be honest. It's because like even in this movie, like the oldie time acting is like, it's like that oldie time acting. But this movie was actually really good. I'm not watching another black and white until Rob watches The Godfather, though. That's my rule. Oh. <laughs> um yeah so normally we'll open a show with like a, a woman crashing a car or something but this whole episode is going to be me mad at women i think <laughs> See, I, we we really took a lot away from it in a different way because i mean who i see as the bad guy is the obvious bad guy you caught a villain i think you're right in catching that woman as a villain too i don't mean otto's wife but the other woman and i've seen this movie maybe 10 times um, uh, but you, you obviously identified a villain. I didn't. Yeah. Well, oh man. All right. So we'll wait until we get to that part in the movie. So initial thoughts. Um, I, oh man, this is, uh, this movie is made about a priest in the pre sex scandal church, right? Yep. In the, in the early fifties, early fifties. So you're dealing with. First of all, very masculine priests. All he of the, is a all war of the, hero. All of the priests are masculine men. They're not in any way your your modern effeminate man, right? You're seeing uh, a, an image of the priest as someone willing to even go away for murder without. But it, it, he'd rather go to prison for a crime he didn't commit than break the seal of confession. Like I was just so impressed by how different the 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 view of the church was before those scandals broke. That's one of the reasons I want to watch this movie is to see how the world saw a priest, even when you were looking at him through a potentially negative eye, as as you do. Uh, well. It's pretty early. It's pretty obvious early on he's not the murderer, but even the audience of this movie isn't sure he's not an adulterer for quite a while. Oh, right. Yeah, that's yep. a good point. Yeah, it was it was so interesting to go through it. Um, all right, so we're going to play a few clips. So if you guys haven't seen now, Jenny, also understand that part of part of me saying I don't like black and white movies because people get it's a so bit. upset. People get so upset when you say you don't like black and white movies. <laughs> I just like them. I like the TV. Turns out Anthony hasn't even tried them. <laughs> <laughs> I think probably like, most most our viewers know what the movie's about, but I mean we're we're gonna give us synopsis. Them. Yeah, can I can one of us yeah, yeah, yeah. no go ahead. Okay, so there's a uh, church in Canada, which by the way, the church that you see is now owned and run by FSSP up there in Quebec City, Canada. Hmm. And um so it's uh, 40s. It's just after the war, late 40s, early 50s. You have to remember a German immigrant at this point would have been coming out of uh, obviously Germany and disliked by the rest of the world, trying to hack his way through life, eke out a living. And so the opening scene in a French part of Canada is a German immigrant goes to uh, one of the parishioners not too far from the church. And this German immigrant not only does he work for the church, this specific parish, but so does his wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, Otto, who uh, Rob texted me, looks like Francis in Rome. <laughs> he, uh, he, really, he really does. Goes to steal from a guy named Mr. Vallette, 
Well, the theft goes wrong, bonks him over the head, kills him. But the problem is Otto, who works for the parish, borrowed a cassock, got blood all over the cassock, returns the cassock. And as he's returning at 11 p.m. that night, his conscience tags him. He doesn't know what to do. Father Logan, who, as you mentioned, is a war hero, uh, sees him in the basement of the church. What do you need? He doesn't know what to say. He says, I need to confess. They go to the confessional. He confesses murder. And uh, later, Otto realizes he, well, his wife makes him afraid that the priest is going to break the seal of confessional. And so Otto decides to pin, pin the murder on the priest. Why? Because one, he's got a cassock that's all bloody. And two, um, he's not allowed to break the seal. And three, um, he really can't even say where he is. And one of the things I'm going to point out is, as the priest on this uh, episode is one of the things that most lay people don't realize about this, and this is the most, this thing um, I'm excited to share with you guys. Not only is the information of the actual confession under the seal, not only is the sins under the confessional seal, not only is the information under the seal, get this, the priest is not allowed to change any of his normal day based on what he knows from the confessional. And that plays in the mystery that we're going to see. What about, can he, to, is he allowed to say someone came to him for, because I'm, I'm really interested because there were so, there were a few times I wanted to actually text you and ask you like, is, is a priest allowed to say someone came to them through confession even? It's not a break of the seal, but it's poor form. So like, let's say, let's say I stopped my car on a highway and there was a kid dying and um, he went to confession to me and I gave him absolution. And let's say there was a lot of mortal sins or something and he died. And the mom was a really good Catholic and she was beside herself screaming and crying, saying, oh, I had been praying he'd come back to confession for years. He never went. He died. He went to hell. I couldn't say, oh, here's all the confessions. I Here's all the things I heard in confession. But on very rare situations and i know rare is a weird word when we're talking like canon law but it's not a break the seal to say someone came but it's poor form unless you really need to so the reason i'm giving you this example the highway is if like someone really thought her, her son went to hell i could say lady i heard his confession oh okay but that's like a one in ten thousand situation that you ever really mm -hmm. should even say someone came um yeah. you know like if someone says did my husband or wife get to confession i just quote I know we trads don't like Jose Maria too much, but he has a great line. He says, we don't talk about confession. That's all. I don't explain anything else. We don't talk about confession. Yeah. So if, even if someone says, did this person go? I don't say yes or no. I just say, we don't talk about confession. Well, what if, um, say, in, during the trial, if they had asked him, you know, did you hear a confession? Well, he's, he have said he's, yes heard, to that, he's heard tens of thousands of confessions. That's, I mean, if, like I were, it, if they had asked him, did you hear a confession? at 11 30 that night or something like that um i think the answer he gave would have been i can't say that's what yeah that's what, that's what that's does, what was he that does say the word, i can't say yeah he actually several times when the police asked him a question about who he was meeting with he said i cannot say that's he right he said i cannot say and it, all it, the times he could not say led to his arrest because it led to just all the suspicion surrounding him. I was so gonna say it, it, the, he yeah. could have, without breaking the seal, told lies that would have helped his case more than just saying, "I cannot say." But yeah. he obviously did not want to lie. Yeah, that's so he, that's the interesting thing. You you can't lie, but you also can't speak of the confession. And I mean, after having watched this movie maybe for the tenth or fifteenth time, when you see him in distress and you see his conscience eating him up. What I believe is another priest Hitchcock wanted him to feel in that moment wasn't, oh, no, am I going to go to prison? Oh, no, am I getting pinned with this? Oh, no, am I going to get hung? I think what's ripping up his conscience is how do I keep the sealed confession amidst all of these pressures at once? I think he was more afraid of breaking the seal than getting hung or executed. I, I think you're right because, um, yeah. well, I'm sure we'll see it later, but during the part where uh, the police think he's on the run. All he did yes. was go to the cathedral where he was ordained. Yes. And it seems exactly. like he's really more meditating on his priesthood and the vows that are associated with, with it than he is meditating on his potential death. 
Exactly. Cause when in, and when he holds, it's exactly right. When he holds his face and falls against that pillar or the wall, when the police are looking for him, the first few times I saw it, I thought he's worried about getting caught. And then it hit me. No, no, no. He's not worried about getting caught. He he's asking God for the strength to never break that seal. I think he knows he's not going to break it, but you know, his reputation, the seal, maybe getting executed, all this stuff. But for a good priest, we fear breaking the seal more than execution. We really do. Because if you think about it, breaking the seals, a mortal sin, plus excommunication, plus hell. Um, and unless you like, yeah, go to the penitentiary in Rome and get recommunicated. So it's very terrifying to us priests to, so, to do that. Now, now Vincent's saying it, the murder was premeditated, but no. All right. So Otto goes in no. and... Well, all right. Let's just let's just stop the playing theft, the clips. I guess the theft right? was premeditated. The murder the wasn't. was well, unless they, unless Vincent they, caught something I didn't. Well, he's saying why the cassock, and Otto explains oh. it was in this part of Montreal. There's lots of priests, so you wear a cassock yeah. and and at the middle in the middle of night, yeah, I think, people aren't I think, gonna think twice. They're not gonna be. Suspicious. Yeah, the cassock may have been just because it was dark. He didn't want to be seen sneaking around. Too, I don't think no. people realize how Catholic Canada was. Exactly. Spe especially Quebec. Like, I always describe ca Canada as the most, the best, a hundred years ago, it was the best catechized country on the planet is how I see Canada. I might be wrong, but I always describe it a hundred years ago as the best catechized country. Now it's the China of the West. They, so. Well, they were thinking, I heard this, I don't know how true it is. I really remember hearing this, that during World War II, they were thinking of bringing the Pope to Canada because it was the most Catholic country yes. that wasn't in Europe, you know, that they could that they could bring the Pope to and yeah. just hide him out. So, I mean, yes, it must, must have been the most Catholic. I didn't know about that, that about the Pope, but it makes sense because it was so, so Catholic. Yeah, they were thinking about moving like the Vatican offices there because they were really worried about Pius the Twelfth. So, all right, why don't we why don't we start playing some of the clips? Because I don't have, I may not make the full show tonight, but Rob and Father Nix will will finish the show out if I if I can't stay for all the clips. I do have to uh, do an early shift tomorrow, so we'll see how it goes. But um, tell them what start. time you got to uh, hit the road. I'm I'm going to do an hour and a half with you guys, so it's eight now, eight fifteen now, and at nine thirty, I'm gonna, I'm going to bail. It, I mean, I say that now, but I know if we're mid conversation, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so should we go chronologically? Because I know I had quite I, think a, so. in the, I had quite a few picked in the very beginning. Yeah, yeah let's so let's do that. The first three will be from you, Father Nix, and then um, and then it will go to Anthony's. So I will just try to pick two in the future, but this movie's dear to my heart because there's a bunch of inside baseball I want to show you guys. Okay, awesome. yeah, this will be cool. So this is the very beginning. Such a Hitchcock uh, opening. That's the DAC ray. Oh, I didn't even pick up on yeah. that. Yeah. Play the Catholic funerals. It's a very Catholic film for a secular film, you know? It's very, uh... It's funny, now knowing the ending. Knowing what Michael had just gone through? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, knowing that he just saw her. The murder was committed yeah. in a lawyer's office. At a lawyer's office, yeah.
Yeah, I had never seen this before. You guys, like, I was so, like, shocked by how much I enjoyed it. It's so good. Probably my top five now, honestly. Very, very interesting. Like, to see, just to see Catholicism in a good light was so awesome, you know? The uh, the actor playing father, Logan, is Montgomery Cliff. And the, the woman, uh, you'll see later, the female lead is Ann Baxter. Okay. Caliph. Why are you here this time of night? I, I wanted to pray. Is something wrong? I. Can I help you in any way? And that man's played by the young Jorge Bergoglio. <laughs> I don't think he looks no like him. Can help me. I have abused your kindness. You gave my wife and me a home, a job, even friendship. I felt you would let me be your friend. Rob, pause it real quick. So wonderful a thing yeah. for a refugee. I, I love that um, people are watching the movies in order to follow along with the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, like I'm so happy. Even if like 20 of you were doing that, like just to just to sit and actually hang with a bunch of people that are watching the movies that we're suggesting and stuff they've never seen before. And it's like, Oh man, this will be an interesting one to have a conversation about. So it might be one that you've seen already. It might not be, even if you don't watch it, you can still watch these shows, but I think it's really awesome that you guys are watching the movies for the upcoming show. It's, it's a very cool thing. So, all right, you can go back. John, the men without a home, you will hate me now. I don't hate anyone, God. You will. After what you have done for me. You trusted me. You saw that my wife and I were not common servants. It was you who found more present tasks for us, working here in the rectory. It was my wife, working so hard. It breaks my heart. What is the matter? I must confess to you. I must tell someone. I want to make a confession. Oh, I didn't even pick up on that. I confess to Almighty God and to you, Father, that I have sinned. Oh, I'm going to pause this here. Um, I I can't go to widescreen. <laughs> it, just for the format of the movie, this is the best we got. I'm sorry. It was filmed in 1953, so. No, oh, that's true, yeah. <laughs> Did you say you hadn't? I hadn't caught that either. That's a brilliant point. Yeah, just because I was. Well, when I saw it originally, I didn't know he was just out of World War II. So now rewatching it, I'm catching it. Oh, of course. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't think I've of seen that. this movie 10 times and I didn't pick up on that. That's brilliant. Stayed up until one this morning watching this movie. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the fact people are watching before. I and mean, you can definitely join us without watching it. But we have so many spoilers in it. It's a lot more fun for us if you do watch it. So we can. Yeah. But we are going to point to some things. Well, I'm learning things from the live chat I didn't catch, so I shouldn't claim we're the experts, but we'll, we'll, point, <laughs> we'll point a few things out. Yeah, so this could have been bigger, but to make the, the resolution good so it's not all grainy, Amazon made it small. So, But here we go. When was your last confession? I can't remember. Can you remember approximately? I have killed Mr. Villette. Okay, that's where you wanted to end, Father. Okay. Okay, that was your scene. Why'd you? Why'd you? Well, obviously, you have to see the confession scene in the beginning, right? So I think just plot wise, I don't. I think I have a lot of uh, beautiful insights into that. Just, just plot wise, just want to remind people this kicks it all off. Now, it gets a little strange because he seems to have genuine contrition. And then as soon as he leaves, that contrition seems to vanish. Right? I think he had contrition. I think I think it was a psychological pressure release valve. He just wanted to I, I think he just had to get something off his shoulders. 
Um, I mean, one of the things most priests know, if you say, when was your last confession? Someone says, I don't remember. They clearly haven't prepared. And not, not that, you know, everyone has to know exactly how many days or weeks it's been. But anytime a priest says, how long? I don't remember. Okay, you're dealing with someone who doesn't go very frequently, yeah. you know. So he obviously didn't prepare for this confession. Hmm. Well, the, the the thing that seemed weird to me because, like, I, I I kept wondering why he even made the confession, right? Because he, but that kind of make you make a good point there that maybe he just wanted to open a, a release valve or something. But yeah. then later on, he when he goes to the priest, he's like, "Haven't you ever been afraid, Father? Like, I'm afraid they're going to hang me." Like, I then I mm -hmm. kind of came around to him a little, and I was like, "All right, yeah. maybe maybe that makes a little bit of sense." But then when he goes to framing the priest, I'm like, "This guy." Like, <laughs> well, the other guy. possibility too is he knew he was going to frame him from the start. I don't, I don't think that's probably the case. But I mean, even a bad Catholic knows a priest can't break the seal. So there's a chance he said, "I need to make a confession," knowing the priest. Maybe he didn't know he was going to frame him, but he at least knew the priest couldn't say anything. Right. Um, the the movie does show uh, Father Logan yeah, putting, putting on, on putting on prior to confession. That shot just didn't capture it um does uh in confession do you at least have to like estimate it estimates fine yeah okay. yeah okay, okay. Next scene. so here's the next scene this is at breakfast the next morning with the the two other priests that are at this parish of course oh, father would you pass me the butter please so that's that his wife Mrs. Jenner, would you ask your husband to look at my front tire it's flat and he did tell her uh, he told so, yeah, that, after yeah, that's the confession, important. and she's the one who believed Father Logan would break the seal. Yep. And um, Otto says that he robbed the lawyer for money because he was ashamed that his wife had to work so hard. Um, but I think we yeah, see at the end of the movie that that might not have been really the truth, due to what. Yeah, happens. I mean, for for him, yeah. There's a the, Otto's a very He's a very unsympathetic character. You really like he says things that he clearly doesn't mean. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. bad acting. I don't know if that's uh I don't know. He's a very no. unsympathetic character. Not bad acting on the actor's part, but on the his the characters. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's like I I don't know. I don't I don't know. I I can't tell if he's a sociopath and he's getting a rise out of this stuff, you know? It's it's a kind of a strange thing. But he puts his wife in this awkward situation by telling her, and now his wife has to sit back and watch the the events that transpire. Now, so I'm I'm seeing her remain silent through a lot of things. Now she's I wonder um it, it, for for a wife to submit to her husband, does that require her to be silent in a situation like this? No, no, because obedience can never trump our call to avoid sin. Okay, and that that's the same thing that we we have in the canceled priest world. It's the same thing we have with the crisis in the Vatican. It's you know, um, the the hierarchy of obedience can never trump divine law. Okay. Yeah, that's good because i i did not i was not a fan of hers for for much of the movie <laughs> now uh she and this doesn't uh you know she she's not the one that, that killed anyone she doesn't even really lie so what type of sin is it that she's committing father is it omission well it is complicit. it's why, yeah i mean she's complicit in um i want she say she's she's not complicit in murder but i mean but we see later that her conscience does end up yeah. functioning, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I yeah. don't think I don't think Otto's a sociopath. I think he's a weak man. Okay. That's just my opinion. I might be wrong, but I don't you don't see the typical narcissistic qualities of like um well, there's some of those. I think he's just I, I just saw like going and broken man. going and confessing to a priest and then framing that priest. That's pretty evil. And yeah. you confess to that's pretty <laughs> sociopathic, that's right? Pretty bad. You're right. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> uh maybe he was hiding from uh maybe he was a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> Could be too. But. Who and knows? You, and you have to remember coming coming to the new world from Germany then. I mean, he would have had almost nothing considering what Germany looked like right after the war. They were very poor. Yeah. I mean, so Hitchcock's framing the poverty as 
integral to his decisions. It doesn't give an excuse for him, but it, the poverty in the backdrop of Germany is integral to his decisions, even if they're bad yeah. decisions. Yeah. Yeah. And Lawrence says, uh, you have to keep in mind uh, that it's Hitch Hitchcock is the director and Hitchcock was a troubled man. So, <laughs> okay. Okay. This breakfast scene's important. My husband. But it is Wednesday. He's not here. Thank you, no. On Wednesdays, he attends to Mr. Villette's garden. Oh. Uh, then, uh, will you tell him when he comes back, please? Yes, Father. I'll tell him when he comes back. No, no, Father Benoit. You should learn how to patch a tire. One should be able to take care of one's possessions. One has a face, one would shave it. One has a... Excuse me. There's something interesting coming up because in, when I watched the movie, I thought he lied to the cops when he first got there. Oh, because well, why what? he says he's there? He said he says I have an appointment. I right? thought he, I, I thought he was lying too about no, it. No, no. Here's this is the big point I want to make. Let let it roll. All right, so let it roll. Okay, I'm glad you bring us up to that. I uh, the uh, the other the uh, the the head pastor of this parish is very particular about. Roman priest being shaved, you know, yeah. clean shaven. It's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me when you want me to cut it, Father. Okay, this is a good spot for me to say what I want to say. Okay, so Anthony, your question was, how can he lie to the cops, right? Well, here's what's... Well, no, no, no. I, I don't think he technically did, but go ahead. Okay. Well, okay, so here's what's so interesting. Father Logan was going to be at Mr. Vallette's place Wednesday morning. Right. He decided not to go because he knew he was murdered. But guess what? How did he have that information? The confessional. Therefore, he had to table that information because... It's not his information, it's Jesus's information. And we have to treat anything that Jesus is information that's not ours as not ours. Yeah. So as he's thinking, well, I can't go there because he's dead. Not that he's going to tell anybody, he's not right. going to break the seal. But then he remembers part of the seal is you can't change any of the trajectory of your life based on what you know. And that's why he gets up so fast because he realizes, oh, yep, that's how seriously he takes because the seal. I was his, going to go. Otto's there, wife but, says her husband's doing the thing he normally does. Exactly. So he realizes, he checks his watch and is like, oh, right, I need to go do this. He was normally going to be there. So he has to feign ignorance of the murder as he shows up. Now, I didn't so pick now, up on that. Yeah, it's so amazing. That's that's how seriously we have to take the seal that you have to go through your norm. You know, there's always this example in seminary. Someone confesses they planted a bomb on a bridge. Do you take the same bridge back? Yeah, you have to. Um, you can't change anything in your life. Can, can you do anything with that information to try to save anyone in that specific nope. scenario? You can you can threaten the person confessing with hellfire and even worse. I mean, you can make it so clear to him what he's going to have to face um, in the confession, but you can't take any of that outside the confession. Now, St. Thomas Aquinas says, if you know something from in and out the confessional, both, you can act on what you know from outside the confessional only if you have good reason. So like, mm -hmm. let's say you see a boy steal from the coffers, one of your altar boys steals from the coffers, and then he sees you see him, and then he goes and confesses it, so it's under the seal. That priest can technically still call the boy's parents or call the police. Now, should he? Well, probably not, because he's going to harm that kid's view of the confessional in the future. But technically, he wouldn't be breaking the seal if he's acting on something outside. But Father Logan only knows about this from the confessional, he knows he's normally going to be at Mr. Vallette's on a Wednesday. Maybe it's every Wednesday, but at least this Wednesday. So he can't change the trajectory of his life based on information mm -hmm. exclusive to the confessional. So, uh, well, Lee, the uh, no uh, only the priest has the seal of confession, right? Like, so I, I mean, I've been in a position where somebody was speaking a little too loudly, and like the whole crowd moved back. Because we were yeah. hearing, you know, so the whole crowd moved back because it was awkward. Like, you don't want to hear somebody's confession. So, no, but it does. Lee has a good question. Um, all Catholics are bound to hear the 
all the Catholics are bound to keep the seal if they hear someone else's confession. Now, I don't think there's excommunication involved, but lay people are absolutely bound. Same with a translator. Like if you if you have to have a uh, well, you really shouldn't even have a translator. But I mean, there's weird example. Like I have a deaf niece. I have a niece who's 100 percent deaf, and luckily she's she had four hundred thousand dollar cochlear implants when she was six months old. But there's really interesting situations for people who are deaf and other people going to confession that any translators or people who are involved are bound by the seal. Can, also, um, can someone who's deaf write a confession out? You can write it out. Yeah. Okay. In fact, we learned in seminary, you can act it out, which let's just, let's just not have any <laughs> confession charades. <laughs> confession charades. Oh man. I don't even want to think how that goes. I know. <laughs> can you imagine this movie? If it was, oh, Anthony, really? I shouldn't have said it. I shouldn't have said it. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I'll no, I mean, as soon as he said, as soon as our canon lawyer said that in I'm seminary, sorry. everyone just started laughing because everyone, everyone went to immediate hand gestures. Oh, this know? is a this is a good question for you, Father. I know the answer, but I'll let you answer it. I, yeah. So why can uh, why can confessions not be heard over the phone or video? Yeah. You know, why during the pandemic did you yeah. know, we still have to make an in person confession? I think a lot of people immediately go to the secrecy of the seal, but I think it's more incarnational than that, that, yes. you know, if you think of um, the Eucharist is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. And if you think of the oil has to touch your head in extreme unction. And if you realize you can't just say the words of baptism over baby, there has to be water splashing over the baby's head. In fact, there's even old school rules. It has to be on the skin, not the hair. And so because all the confessionals are in some or all the sacraments are in some sense an extension of the incarnation of Jesus Christ, God become man, it has to be in person. That's why yeah. that's why the phone. So I think the fact you can't do it on fax or phone or email or whatever. Yeah, there's there's definitely the danger of a break of the seal. But the, the bigger issue is it's incarnational. 100%. Does that it, uh, apply also to sacramentals like a blessing uh, a bl is a, a blessing given over, say, like like a podcast like that. Is that efficacious? It is. Uh, I asked Father Ripperger once if I can do deliverance prayer on the phone. He said, yeah, you just have to be careful that people don't start asking for it too much. I just said it on a podcast. So yeah, <laughs> so everyone's going to call you, you up. Yeah, you can. You just have to be careful of um, excessive use of it. But um, some deliverance uh, or F Father Isaac does chapter three on the phone for people frequently. Chapter three of um, Leo's exorcism. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's very, okay. very much to do with the incarnation and the priest speaking in persona Christi and having to be there in your presence as he gives you absolution, I would say. So, yep, that's it. That's the answer. Right, let's go. Do we want any more of this scene or do we want is to that? Yeah, let, let's just finish off because yeah. this is where, you know, again, he's realized he has to be there. Um, and, and in fact, I think my very next scene, let's finish this one up to however long I said, and then I do skip like four minutes and there's another scene where the cop looks over his shoulder to see Father Logan, because this is where he talks to the blonde hair woman. And yep. this is where even the audience so, who knows he didn't murder the person, we're not sure at this point if he's an adulterer or breaker. So this body. this is where you wanted the scene. Oh, okay. Can you skip to the next one then? Yep. Almost the so, same scene, but four minutes up, four minutes past it. Yep. So this, this is still the crime investigation. Five hundred dollars. It does not look like robbery, sir. They usually take the lot. You now, so we Otto didn't hear money it, back. but well, so Otto said he only needed two thousand dollars. So my thought at this point was either he there was twenty five hundred in there and he only took two thousand, or the the murder happened and he didn't take anything. I don't yeah, know. He put if the money back. I took that as he put the money back. I I don't remember. Well, no, so, um. He's oh. saying here that he stole two thousand. Oh, well, did he? Uh, do we know he were? Did he go back to the scene? We don't know that, do we? He went there to work that day. He opened the door. He was the first one in the house. Oh, he's the one that reported the murder. Yeah, he's the one that reported the murder. So that's one hundred percent what happened. He stole two thousand, put five hundred back, kept fifteen hundred. So he still kept the money. Wow. So he his it, like, and it like, makes it then look like it's not a robbery. Yeah, his confession was invalid, first off. I mean, he, you know, he, you have to make reparation for the thing you did. I can understand well, not Actually, wanting... not... I, I don't believe you actually have to make reparation for absolution. You have, to, you have to follow the penance that the priest gives you, and the priest told him to put the money back, right? Yeah, I don't think we can make that 
I mean, my understanding is we, we can highly encourage that. I don't know if we can make that the actual penance. Oh, okay. um, but I think if it is invalid, it's more due to lack of any, like you don't have to have perfect contrition, but you need imperfect contrition. We don't know his heart and the whole thing, but I miss what you guys, I totally missed this about returning the money anyway. So that's really interesting. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I did, I did not notice that. Okay. Um, work at the rectory at St. Marie's, eh? Yes. Good. Now, um, how did you find the body? On Wednesdays, I work in Mr. Villette's garden. This morning, I arrived as usual at 8.30. I came inside. You have a key? No, the door was open. That frightened me. An open door? Why should that frighten you? The door was always locked. I went in, and there he was. I could see that he was dead. I wanted to run. Run? There I was. A man without a country, alone. Now, just to kind of clarify for people, 2000 might not sound like a lot, but that's a 1953. In today's money, it's like stealing more like $25,000. Discovering a murder. I thought of the police. I'm always afraid of the police. That the German fear this fear. There's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, step outside for a moment. Yes. Thank you, sir. Villette's been murdered. He's dead. I can't believe it. Now stop. We're free. That's yeah. That's where he wants this, to stop. Anyways. Hold on. I know so everybody wants to think we're, we're free. She says. I yeah. think. I want everyone really. Everyone thinks Otto's the bad guy in this movie, and I'm telling you, this woman is the main villain of this movie. She is. She's worse than Otto. In my mm. eyes, she didn't murder anybody. She didn't murder anyone. I don't care. She's worse and she, than Otto. She, she wanted to do things worse than murder. No, she which... didn't realize later in the scene. She didn't realize. When, I mean, when she's trying to get Logan off the hook, she doesn't realize she also gave a motive. I really don't think she. I don't. I really don't think she realized she gave a motive to murder when she's trying to explain. I've loved Father Logan. He didn't love me. She really thinks he's getting him off the hook on his own vocation, but inadvertently she gives a motive to a potential murder that he's done. I mean, let's talk about this like woman for a motive. second. All right. Let's talk about this woman, this woman who, oh, this woman, we're at 38 minutes in the opening scene. <laughs> 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 we're never going to get through this movie. We're, we're, oh, cause this is all I want to talk about. 38 minutes, woman. 10 minutes into the movie. This probably <laughs> isn't even the point to talk about it, Anthony. No. Okay. Keep going. He just knows right. he's got to go to work. I'm just telling everybody, this woman he's... is the main villain of the movie. Forget Otto. Otto. I, I, I forget. So Otto, Otto commits a sin that cries to heaven for vengeance. And yet he's not the main villain here. No, no, <laughs> no. He's not. He's not. She's funny. I like being a liberal for once. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is fun. Okay, so at this point, uh, we go to Anthony's at one. Let's see here. The interrogation. Yeah, the interrogation. So Anthony, you didn't give me uh, an end time, so you just tell me when. Yeah, I'll just, we'll, we'll just go through it. Because and... I thought it was really well, interesting the things he couldn't say. Questions, and we'll get it over as soon as possible. You've been at St. Marie's for how long? Well, nearly two years now. Hmm. I have known Father Malay for for a, a long while. As a matter of fact, I was a choir boy when he was over at the Basilica. Really. Hmm. I've heard that uh, you saw military service during the last war. Yes. I believe you were awarded the military cross. Yes. You seem to have done a number of brave things. Well, I survived. <laughs> Are you given to understatement, Father? Well, that depends. <laughs> this case, this uh, Vallette murder, is all understatement so far. You knew Vallette, didn't you, Father? Slightly, yes. And perhaps you can give me some help. What was he like? Unfortunately, I didn't know him well. Well, did you know him uh, socially or in a business sort of way? In neither way, actually. Uh, I'd met him once many years ago. Uh, Thank you. Not, I didn't realize now, at the time. What now rewatching, now rewatching, you hear him like he's telling the truth about everything. He met him once everything. many years ago That's when right. he 
Go and it wasn't that. business or personal. He just kind of punched the guy. <laughs> Met him once. <laughs> years ago. Yeah. Yeah, foreshadowing. Oh, you've known this for that. And yet, he was a lawyer. He had clients. Not one of his clients had any information to give about the man. Because he oh, probably blacked out a lot. client of his, as you say, you hardly knew him. But um, may I ask what you were going to see him about uh, yesterday morning? Well, that, that was a, a personal matter. Well, you were acting for someone, one of your parishioners, perhaps. I can just say that my visit didn't have anything to do with Vallette's death. Well, of course it didn't, Father. But you do understand, don't you, that I must consider every scrap of information. Yes. When a murder has been committed, each scrap of information is important to the police. Of course. I know sometimes it seems like uh, prying. It can be very embarrassing. Well, I'm not embarrassed, Inspector. Good. This Great. cop reminds me of Lofton. <laughs> I've been wondering about what a lady you met outside Bullet's house. This like the way Quite he's by talking. chance, I happen to see you from inside the house. Uh, Inspector, the appointment that I had with Follette couldn't be of any importance to you. Oh, but we aren't discussing that at the moment, Father. You see, with a murder, one has to jump from one detail to another. Forgive me, perhaps I jumped too suddenly for you. Well, it seems maybe I don't follow as fast as you jump. <laughs> I have a methodical mind. I do have to take things one by one. So do I. So do I. The difficulty perhaps is that, uh, well, we aren't thinking from the same point of view. Could it be that, Father? It could be. I don't really know what your point of view is. Oh, uh, then I put it badly, very badly. Yeah, I, th I think we could. I, I don't remember exactly. Like I just remember him him having to keep saying, uh, uh, like not be able to share with the cop the information. He said, "I can't say." He kept. He just kept saying, "I can't say." Do you think he was there to hear Valette's confession, and that's why he can't talk? No, I think he was going he, there to he, talk. He, yeah, they had an, him and oh, yeah, Baxter's character had an appointment. It was about the blackmail. Yes, right. He was going to go there with the woman, and he said he told the woman like, "I'll take care of it." And he was going to go there the next morning and have a conversation with him and tell okay. the man you can't blackmail her, right? Okay. So now, but when he went and talked to the cops that first time, um, that I think that's why I wanted to show the scene, uh, like because when he said I had an appointment with him, I thought he was lying there. Right. And then you find out later yeah, on, he, no, 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 he, he really did have an really appointment did. to go there. Right. So, because it's right. when I first watched it, that scene where he jumps up, you put that all in perspective for me. I'm like, but he didn't have an appointment. He just jumped up at the last minute and he ran over there. So he I did. thought he was lying. It was a, it, I'm glad that we, we hammered that. Yeah. Out, you know? Yeah. And he wasn't allowed to remember that he didn't have a meeting after a man's been dead, but yeah. he's not allowed to remember that. Yeah. Uh, what's the next scene? So this is um kind of the reminiscing about their past together okay let's go let's <laughs> go his letters were long at first always oh, serious i didn't so for those who didn't watch right before this she describes how they knew that her and father logan knew each other before the war they were in love um he wasn't a priest yet he wasn't a priest uh they were kind of ready for marriage but he didn't want to get married right before the war and have her just become another widow he said there had been enough widows from this war so and when he left for war the whole idea was when he got back they would they would marry them that's right well want serious well what <laughs> no because he told her not to wait for me he did say that he said don't wait for me right so, but it see it seems like he did that because he assumed he was gonna die. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I think he liked her. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. he definitely, well, 100%. definitely had feelings for her. Yeah. And I would prefer those to no letters at all. Because after a while, he stopped writing. Soon afterward, I I started working for my future husband. Pierre was. Pierre was. So I'm just going to go back just a second here. So after watching the whole thing, one thing I realized is just how virtuous her husband is. How how oh, virtuous Pierre sure. is. Um. 
Oh, for sure. That he 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 knew about all this, knew her feelings for Michael and for the lack of feeling kind of for himself, but still was you know wasn't willing to give up the marriage uh, at all. Madam Grappa, perhaps if you are unable to continue. Pierre was always so brilliant. He was kind. He realized I was unhappy. And like very kind people, he, he didn't ask me why. He just tried to amuse me. We got married. I was happy. I was through with... I... I thought I was through with... You know. Well... Oh, yes, it was at my wedding I saw Billette for the first time. Second time. No, first time. Then the war was really. Yep. Yeah. The men were coming home. Oh, okay. I knew the day. Gotcha. He would come home. On that day, I went down to the port. You're right. A boat had just come in. Suddenly, I saw him. He had changed, I suppose, but I didn't notice. See, he doesn't know she's married at this point. Okay, so let's 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 get. Hold it. on. We arranged Twenty to seconds. The next day. It was a lovely day. The end of summer. Michael talked and talked. He told me all the thoughts that had come to him during the war. I didn't want to hear about the war. Okay. That's where you wanted me to cut a father. Okay. Now, is this after the ferry scene? Go back a little bit to the ferry scene. The let's, ferry have, scene? Let's, let's hear the conversation between her and him on the ferry. Okay. Yep. Hold on. I'm pulling that up right now. You mean when he leaves for the war? No. no um, the discussion they have prior let's to. In, let's get into this. Prior moment. to this. Who, who th this guy comes back from war? She already made vows. I don't care what her feelings are for her husband. I don't care. Uh, oh, hold on. One person does have a question. Does her um, feelings about Michael and her kind of reservations about the marriage make that an invalid marriage? No, no. If you say no, it's a very, very low bar to contract a valid marriage, um, unless there's absolute coercion. Then it's valid even if i mean if you're if you get married and you're in love with somebody else but you say the vows as long as it's not a shotgun marriage or it's your cousin you're marrying or something like that um even if she was intending to not be faithful and we don't know that was the case but but dude, that was. is it, i think that's a very post council well th i know that's why i want father's <laughs> explanation no, I mean, that would have never flew as a legitimate nullification at one point in 1953 not no, a mean, chance there was a letter by pope john paul ii who even explained unless there's a like prior to marriage understanding that you're going to either not be monogamous or have zero children. i don't mean even just like occasional use of con contraception if you got married with the understanding you're going to have zero children or you got married with the understanding it's not going to be a monogamous marriage. Anything short of that, John Paul II is like, stop giving out so many annulments. Wait a minute. John Paul II isn't involved in this movie. Okay. He's way after. Okay. We're talking well, it, 1953. It's a, that's actually support, but that's supporting what you're saying, Anthony, yeah. that it's, it's still a valid, like the yeah. church has even, in other words, if even post conciliar popes recognize the bar is so low to contract a valid marriage, so much more in 1950 was it that unless she was under absolute coercion by Mr. Groundfort, which she wasn't, nope. it was totally a valid marriage. This is supporting your argument, Anthony. Then yeah. it was totally a valid marriage, even if she was in love with another dude. Yeah. So she's. She made vows. I don't care how you look at it. She made vows, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. She so. goes and meets a guy from her past, doesn't tell him she's married, does not tell this man she's married, and tries to get him to commit adultery without his knowledge. Like, she's committing adultery, but 
he's inadvertently doing that, right? So let's go back to the ferry scene now. Yep. So it's not bad enough that she tries to get him to, uh, she lies to him and she breaks her own wedding vows. Yeah, I was saying Rob, someone says Rob and Anthony losing weight. Rob's yeah. definitely looking, a, I said that to Rob right before we uh, went on live. I said off the air to him, he's looking real healthy. I'm down about 15 pounds since the start of Lent. Nice, man. I have not been tracking, but. Yeah, you look thinner for sure. Oh, well, thank you. Okay, we ready? Yep. Yeah, the fairy scene. So I want to see what she says. Good morning. Good morning, Father Logan. We shouldn't be seen together for your sake. I had to see you. Ruth, the police have been questioning me. They saw the two of us talking outside of Villette's house the other morning. They're trying to find out who you are. I don't care. I've got to tell you. You are being suspected. I know that. You shouldn't be seen talking to me. There are probably police all over the phone. <laughs> thing is for me to tell them you were with me that night. You can't. They want to know why. Do you think I care? I'll tell them everything if I had to. Ruth, you've got to think of yourself. You've got to think of your husband. Think of Pierre. Think of him before I think of you. I've never been able to. And at this point in the movie, you're still wondering if something more had happened that night between them. No. At hey, this are. point in the movie, I know the character of this priest. <laughs> and what I see is a wicked temptress trying to get a man to break his holy vows. All right? <laughs> and I see her not care about her own vows, trying to get this priest to lead the priesthood for her. This woman is the main protagonist villain of this film. Antagonist. Antagonist, yeah, yeah. Protagonist would be the good guy. That's why I got you here, Rob. <laughs> this woman is the most vile thing her emo she wants the she loves the she doesn't care about anything but her happiness you wicked evil woman yes she's a chalice chipper i don't know what that meant, means but i like it no vincent he's not <laughs> hangry he just he watched the movie this morning and he's been working himself up all day to be i, uh, I was so mad watching this scene you have no you idea. hadn't seen like, it till today no i watched it today <laughs> I watched it today. <laughs> Why'd you like, cut up in your homework at the last minute? I, I'm like, I'm watching it and I'm like, this. Why do you think he's a high school dropout? <laughs> this vile woman. Yeah, I was always bad at homework. So, I this... mean, I, I'm i glad you're saying this, Anthony, because I had a little bit of misplaced compassion for her for marrying a guy she wasn't in love with. But you're right. She made the vows. She's got to stick with it. People make commitments in life that they in retrospect, don't enjoy it, and we got to finish up life and get to heaven with them. That's right. That's it. Love is a choice, like somebody said earlier, right? And it's more than just her. Like, she, look, you're not just, your own soul is not all that's at stake here. You get a priest mm -hmm. to leave the priesthood because you want him. You now send your both of you to hell. She's earning two, well, three vocations, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, her husband's hers, and this, like, this woman is destroying three souls where Otto only took one. Oh, well, wow. <laughs> that's an wow. interesting way to see Otto it, okay? in the end kind of takes three, two actually. Well, but his wife, maybe, maybe she makes it since he, she kind of has a conversion. Oh, yeah. right? So you know? look, I, I, I watched this movie hating all women until his <laughs> wife redeemed women a little bit towards the end. So I'm sorry, ladies, I get a little, <laughs> there's nothing that makes but, me i mean you're mad. winning me to my you actually started to win me to my view and you said you know she took th she almost took three souls where he took one i mean that's a very that's an important insight if she had succeeded if she had succeeded then she would have you know harmed a lot of well now, she doesn't go to confession at any point in this movie to ask forgiveness for trying to lure this man to hell okay here's a, here's a violate her husband oh here's this a, is a here's a fun question for the live chat could if she went to confession for trying to seduce father logan could he absolve her 
Wait, I'm sorry. Say that again. I was reading the comment. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe let me back up. If they both fell, if if she had succeeded in in seducing Father Logan, and she wanted to go to confession to him, could he absolve her? I don't know. I, well, I mean, isn't that? I think that's a violation, right? Isn't that automatic excommunication? Yep, exactly. He'd be it's an automatic excommunication if you try to yeah. absolve someone with whom you, the priest, yeah, yeah. fell okay. on the sixth commandment. But yeah, that's what I did about, not know that. Yep, that's what happened automatic with excommunication. Rubnik, exactly. Yeah. All right. How about if he hadn't fallen? Could he absolve her for trying to seduce him? Yeah, if he didn't yeah. participate. That's correct. He could absolve. So wait, so so Rupnik. Is, was automatically excommunicated, yeah, and is not still in charge of a parish in Rome or Croatia. He, he was restored, Slo Slovenia or Slovakia. There, he had, Yugoslavia. He, he he was restored by Francis. Well, would not, but not not like he wasn't. Uh, he had an automatic excommunicated. Yeah, he was. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I think he was just restored to like parish life. It's it's an automatic excommunication, is all I know. If you absolve someone with whom you've done six commandment sins, it's automatic excommunication. Is, is that an excommunication that can be lifted by any priest or only by Rome? Only by Rome. Only by Rome. Yep. It has to go to what's called the penitentiary. Only the penitentiary can can lift that. Yeah, or, I just or the I Pope. Just, Either the penitentiary, the Pope, or the only two. I, I just have a uh, a, a real issue with <laughs> people violating their vows right i mean i just yeah. i think that i think that we live in a time where people especially with the rampant divorce and people making excuses for well i have to go be me i have to go make myself happy like this is the seed planting of the of the i gotta go and make me happy i gotta you go do you girl you go mm -hmm. do you but don't worry I mean, about your you, husband you think and i don't mean this put her in a state of a state of sanctifying grace but do you well i'll just say my opinion i think she somewhat redeemed herself in the scene when she tries to show how innocent father logan is that yeah she tried to seduce him he said no here's how father here's how Villette comes into this whole thing she totally shows the um the cops that Logan is absolutely innocent of the potential, you know, act of adultery that she tried to bring him into. I thought that's a pretty redeeming scene. Now, what she inadvertently does is she gives the cops accidentally a motive, a motive for murder. Yeah. She doesn't realize yeah, she's unintentionally. Doing it. It's very unintentional. unintentionally. But so. don't you think she's somewhat? Thanks for saying that. I don't think I've ever been called base. That's a nice compliment. <laughs> but this is what the young people say these days. Do you think she somewhat redeems herself and at least trying to exonerate Logan? Yeah, I think I think she's trying to be honest about. It. I mean, she does come clean, right? She doesn't go for absolution, but she comes clean to her husband about everything. She comes yeah. clean to everyone, and she shows the virtue of the priest, right? Yep. And that and that he was always a gentleman. He never, you know, the only time he slipped up was when he had no idea she was married and he kissed her. That was it. That's right. And, and once then, he found out she was married, he goes and runs off and he joins seminary. And that's what's so interesting about her exon in exonerating him of adultery. She places a motive of why Father Logan would want to go kill. Vla I mean, look, yep. now he's now he's capable here. You have a priest capable of punching a man in the face. Who, a war hero who's not afraid of killing people. Either. He's not afraid yeah. of killing people, especially who, Germans. Who's well, blackmailing that... him and a woman? I mean, you have total motive to for murder at this point. This here is a great insight, and anyone who didn't watch the movie won't realize this till the end. But um, before the the final couple scenes, uh, Father Logan does tell her he wants her to see reality, and then she sees what he does at the end of the movie and sees the reality that. He is and always will be a priest. In... And she is and always will be married. Yep. So I That's guess awesome. she, you know, there is a little redemption arc for this vile succubus, but. but no. you, I mean, I do love the uh, ordination scene. You see the difference between old school ordination and new school ordination that, I mean, just the richness of that ceremony. I'm so happy that Hitchcock include included an ordination scene. I want to say an old, old right ordination, but that's all there was, obviously, in 1950. Um, so you see the ordination mass, which is a, a very awesome scene he's included there. So, now, Father, I wanted to kind write of... about her being the protagonist then. <laughs> uh, well, she's a complex character. That's the yeah. thing. 
Yeah. Well, so. So if Otto and his wife get at absolution, then is it is she the only one in a state of mortal sin? Well, my hope would be she saw what a good man Logan was that she eventually she I mean if she's, if she's capable of saying all these things to the cop in front of her husband, in front of Father Logan, we have some hope she made a good confession sometime in her life yeah. after this. After um, this also, a little update on Father Rupnik. Hello, so, National Catholic was. Register, May 2020. Rupnik is officially excommunicated, and the Jesuits say the decree was lifted later that month. Okay. And it can only be lifted by the Pope. Or someone with his delegated authority. Which yes. is the penitentiary. Wow, less than one month, huh? Whereas Wild. some uh, some really good priests and bishops die excommunicated, supposedly. Well, um, and you know they did ask a nun recently about Rupnik, and her answer was, he really saw this as mystical. Um, so, I mean, he was using terms. This wasn't oh, just it's, like it's vile. Like you couldn't even yeah, repeat some of the stuff right. he I mean, was doing. It right? really, it really was vile. grooming. That's right. And he's like spiritual I mean, he grooming. Turned, he turns the Catholic sacraments into satanic. It wasn't just it's satanic. Uh, demonic. Yeah, it's right. It wasn't just a. It wasn't just a priest fell in his off time with a with a nun. He was he brainwashed them. He groomed them, and he used the sacraments as satanic ceremonies with them. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys why I'm. Like he's saying, I'm tri triggered over this mix. But I'm going to tell you why. Because I take chastity so freaking seriously. Like, I don't let myself look at anything. I don't. I'm walking down the streets of New York. Girls are half dressed. I don't look. And I know if me, a man with a male libido, can control my lust. Like, this woman's got to get it, get her emotions together. You don't allow your emotion. I mean, I'm allowing my emotions to control me right now a little bit. <laughs> but <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, this woman made, like, I take my vow of marriage so seriously. There is no, I would not even allow myself to have the thought in my mind that something else could happen. And I expect that of other, of, of women too. I expect that but, of my but wife. But here's the thing, Anthony. We men are wired visually. Women are wired emotionally i mean there's obviously mm. exceptions to it we have emotions too women are, are attracted to men through their eyes but that generalization isn't totally off base and so i mean this is why women more will more often confess um like mommy porn which is books because it's emotional yeah. it's not yeah. based on the eyes you know what i mean and so um mommy her porn. her fall is is emotional not visual even sexual. I mean, I happy. would I would argue emotional cheating. Like if 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 my wife was, I mean, hypothetically, if she was having a texting emotional relationship, it would hurt me more than if it was just some physical thing that happened once and never again. Right? Like I would think the emotional uh, infidelity would would rip your heart out worse. Do you, I mean, do you feel any compassion for this lady, though, that she had to marry a guy she was never into at all, that her... She her, didn't have to do anything. Her, you're right. You're right. She didn't have to. I just feel a little bit sorry. I feel, for her, I feel bad for her husband. Her, sweet, I feel her husband, who yeah. Rob said, this guy has real virtue because he is standing by his wife while she's cucking him basically in front of all these cops right telling these oh, men he, she's in love with another man she cheated on her husband with him and didn't tell the man that she was married that she did it with like and this guy's still standing by her and saying, he shows but almost Pierre's no kind animus of, towards father logan that too yeah but pierre's kind of a wimp he doesn't reel her in at all through the years i mean yeah she's obsessed with another man he has no problem with, i mean he's kind of a wimp in that marriage that's he's true for he lack of a better term, I mean, that's what he is. He's he, there's something about that. He um, should have said, You're not talking to Father Logan again, you're not, yeah. you're not meeting her, you're not meeting him at the dock, you're not even going to talk about him anymore in this house. He could have said all yeah. those things. He didn't now yeah. that they had not seen each other until what the day before the murder, so it's not like it happened over years, it's like he was maybe yeah. it happened over like two or three days. She saw him once and didn't see him again for five years. Yeah. And then just saw him one more time. I, I mean, yeah, all right. But and sometimes I don't think this is the case here, but sometimes women are try like sometimes seducing women don't even know they're seducing. Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. That's true. So um 
uh, I don't know if they're talking um, about um, so um father you brought up the ordination scene um I was gonna ask you this movie makes a a big point that that something changed in in Logan from when he before he went to the war yeah. to now as a priest um you know and it makes a point that he that he changed and became a priest and they make that ordination seemed pretty powerful. And, and like I mentioned earlier, he goes back to that cathedral where he was ordained. Um, can, can you describe what, if anything, you like, did you feel like you were changed at your ordination? Or, you know, did, did you feel not that things have to be emotional or, or have feelings, but do you like, were you changed? Yeah. In a sense. Well, and I, I think we can talk about emotions and feelings. I did feel different after both my diaconate and my priestly ordination. Um, I mean, here's a weird thing. So I was ordained 13 or 14 years ago. I look like I was 17 years old when I was ordained. And if I was walking around downtown Denver in my Roman collar, you have to remember this was before I was in the, the hermit habit. But if I was just in a Roman collar, I was, if I would be talking to like a homeless man or a woman on drugs on the street, or just be walking into a supermarket and get things, um, people would always call me sir or hey you or whatever else but here's what's so weird guys get this w right after i was ordained i didn't look any older all these people on the streets called me father immediately even though i didn't look any older than 17 and it was immediate that like I mean, it wasn't 100 percent, but like 95 percent of the people who would have called me sir or kid or you all randomly started calling me father it's almost like that's interesting yeah they could almost see i mean you had saints like saint philip neri let's say they could see on someone's head a reflection if they were a priest, but they were mystics. The weird thing is even non-mystics somehow knew I was a priest. What did they call you when you had the dreadlocks? <laughs> <laughs> I saw some of those mountain biking pictures you posted recently. Those are pretty good. You did look like a baby, dude. Right? <laughs> Just a baby. Um, so keep in mind, oh, she uh, she's a woman post-World War II. Uh, women were tied to their husband uh, to be to to be fortune you were made to marry so i if that was the case in this scenario i would have a different perspective but this woman chose to marry this man because he was kind to her and she was lonely and she agreed to it and you know she didn't need to agree to that she wasn't forced to marry this guy she was waiting for the other guy and the other guy said hey don't wait for me so she married this guy because she was too impatient to wait for the other guy or whatever the reason was and she made vows. Look, you make vows, yeah. you know, I'm sorry. It's just... Well, I've, I've even, learned a lot from you, Anthony, on this woman, but I think we should get back to the crime and the seal and the... Yeah, okay, okay. No, I like are we done point. with? Are we done with the uh, the fair yeah, scene? Yeah. All, the, okay. all the women's stuff we're done. I just had to get that out. <laughs> yeah, you've been building it up inside all day. <laughs> okay, so next we're going to go to uh, their first meeting with the Let. Let me pull that up. Yeah, it's it was for me, it was more the I like the sacrament of marriage that I saw getting messed with, dude. I was just like, like, I hate when people don't take the sacrament of marriage to the utmost seriousness and the holy orders, like to 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 not take those two sacraments as our our, our the reflection of the divine is what really unnerved me about it. Like, I don't know. So are we gonna go to this uh where where we see Villette everywhere I went? Or are we going to look at um, where Father Logan's on the? We want we don't want to say he's on the run from the police because he never really runs. But yeah, let's go to that. Yeah. Okay. Or, or do you want to go to that, or do you want to see this gazebo scene with Villette? I th where that where then she I says he's. I think we should do the gazebo gazebo scene with Villette real quick. Okay. Okay. Can we do that? Yep. Anthony <laughs> and Rob. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. <laughs> they want to. Did she? Yeah, drive? Just about the highlight. <laughs> did she drive? <laughs> 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 You guys think they did anything that night? No. No, I think it's it's very clear they didn't. Yeah, I agree. I agree. He walked as though he owned it. As a matter of fact, he did. I was still in the summer house. He didn't know who I was, but... And remember, he's not a priest yet, obviously. Mm -hmm. Because he made some remark to Michael. Michael knocked him down. 
came out and stood on the steps of the summer house. Looked down at it. He looked up at me and said, Good morning, Madame Grandfort. It was Villette. What could I say to Michael? Notice she didn't uh, have, have a ring on her finger mm. that she raised up. So Michael definitely did not a, know. She had definitely every intention not. on adultery. Sure. Told him I was married. So she's married. He's not a priest yet. I didn't see him again for five years. So this is, all right, this scene is where she un unintentionally gives him a motive. Yeah. Unintentionally, yep. Because she's describing what happened then, how he got ordained, how she's been after him, but he never returned her, quote unquote, love or lust. Right. And that Valette caught them and Valette's been blackmailing her and yeah. that she, that the priest said he would go there the next day and speak with him. And that gave him motive to, to defend her. Like he knocked her, he knocked him out and all that stuff. Yeah. I do want to make sure we get to, um, what's the next scene I, I, I said, Rob? You only, you only gave one, dude. No, I said we should get to. You said opening confession and the police interrogation. Those are the two you said. Okay, so what about the, I want to go to the trial itself. And then. To the, the verdict? To the verdict for sure. Okay, because... we got it. We got it. We got a couple more before that. Okay. So we're we got a little bit more here. Till the day Michael was ordained. This is the ordination scene. Oh wow! Good thing we changed all this. Yeah. Right. Oh wow. Bishop laying hands with gloves. No, off their gloves are off there. Then I began running into Villette all the time. He appeared everywhere I went. Yeah, that's where you told me to cut it. Okay. It's, you made a great point, Rob. How many other people around the city had he, had he been blackmailing through all this time? Well, and because they said he had clients, mm -hmm. but no one knew anything about him. And it it seems like he was probably blackmailing people. Yeah, that's kind of shady. And you'd think they would want to tell about that after he died, but then they wouldn't want to give motive for why he'd be dead, because then it would look like they were suspects in it all if he yeah. was blackmailing them. So I, I only have uh like another 20 minutes. I really do have to try to get some sleep. So I I would like to go to the trial. Uh, and maybe maybe we do the verdict yeah. and that whole outgoing scene with the what because that's I mean look how how long we we go and talk on this stuff so why don't we go to the verdict okay and then so there's and then there's one other trial scene right before that okay let's so do let's that. do that first and then the verdict okay let me pull it up and I I gave you the one I guess we can come back to this if we have to but the police whistle at. Uh, Hour one minute eight thirty, where yep. Father Logan's leaning up against the pillar. The reason there's a reason there's a theological reason I love that scene. I don't want to skip that. It's at one hundred five thirty nine. If we can see that. Well, yeah, let's do that. Then we just have three scenes left. That one, the other trial one, and then the verdict, Anthony. Okay. So let's try to get through. Yeah, just move through them quick, and I and we should be all right. One hundred five thirty nine. Okay. Here we go. Please. This is probably my favorite scene. Please, you can tell the police, yes. I'm ready. I'd like to speak with Father Logan, please. Father Logan is not here. Good morning, monsieur. Oh, good morning, Father. I came to see Father Logan, but Keller says he's not here. Not here? He didn't say what's going out. He didn't say anything to me. I saw... Looks like Francis, guys. I tried to mm -hmm. speak to him. He seemed frightened. I asked him if I could do anything. He didn't even hear me. He went out by that door 20 minutes ago. Maybe 30. Thank you. I'll be back, Father. All right, Murphy, what is it? A 
and stand by outside the rectory. Logan is gone. Derpy. Give me the radio room. <laughs> Derpy, I like that. <laughs> They think he's running right now. Yeah. What he's really doing. Well, when he looked at that suit, I thought he was contemplating running. I think I, maybe. I think it reminded him of Keller. Oh. I think I that think hat he, looked a lot like Keller's hat. I don't know, man. I think that that was like a temptation. Yeah. Maybe. And a it would to to put on it, civilian clothes and run. And it that wouldn't be a sin. Yeah, because he didn't actually commit the murder. Yeah, it wouldn't be a sin, hmm. but it's more it's more virtuous to face, you know, because Unjust persecution. actually, you no, know, the only reason. Well, yeah, I mean, here's the thing: is if he ran, guess who he'd be indicting? The entire priest, because what he would be doing is saying, "We priests are capable of that." Where instead of doing what he does, he actually takes one for the team, and by the team, I mean the entire priesthood. Now hmm. it does; he does get vindicated and vindicates the whole priesthood. But think about it: if he had run. Then what he'd be telling the entire city, Quebec City, is, "I did it, right?" The Protestant business suit. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, yeah, I, I think it was. I think watch, it was a I temptation. Love, the next thirty oh. seconds is my favorite scene in the movie. All right, so we'll shut up during that. <laughs> What does this tell you? That carry your cross. Carry your cross, yeah. And what is his cross? To, to I mean, to face to, it. To face and, it and and keep, keep the, the seal, seal of confession, the seal, which is integral to the priesthood. So his cross is the priesthood, and and the priest is, you know, the priest is conformed to Christ at his ordination. That is, you know, we just saw the ordination scene, but the priest is also conformed to Christ through false accusations, through the sacraments through how everyone treats him you'll see you know and after the verdict scene that's what i i'm really excited to get to that because the parallels yeah. to christ before the sanhedrin you can't yeah. mistake it right and that's yeah. innocent innocent man standing in persona christi being slandered with all sorts of accusations that are so not true i mean this is the most virtuous man i've you know and that, like Think about it. we just met another priest there on the road. Not a bad guy, not not the hero, just fine priest. But he's walking alone. Look how Christ is carrying his cross alone. All of his, all of, almost all of his apostles fled. So the mm-hmm. loneliness of a priest carrying his cross you, is captured mm-hmm. in this scene of Christ carrying his cross alone. He walks, he walks the streets alone, knowing he's innocent. But how many people in five hours, ten hours, as the trial proceeds, are going to know he's innocent? Only him. And the and actually Otto's wife is the only other one who knows he's yeah. innocent. That's the scene I love. Okay, I've got one more quick one more quick thing to add here. Every priest in the city could account for where they were at eleven PM. Why couldn't Father Logan account for where he was between eleven PM and midnight? Father Logan went back to the rectory and he couldn't account for it because he was with Otto. Yeah, exactly. He wasn't allowed to say so every, that's one of the main reasons that they get hot on his trail is every priest says where they were 11 PM. Those two girls saw someone in a cassock. He could have easily said, Oh, Otto had my cassock, blah, 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 blah. But he won't break the seal. 
but well, he didn't have his cassock. Otto had a oh, different cassock. Else's? So, okay. so when they ask him, "Is this your cassock?" He says, "No, it's not uh, my cassock." You're right. You're right. But he also, couldn't, he couldn't say I, where he was because he couldn't say I was hearing confessions. Well, no, he couldn't say I was hearing confession. But so Otto says, "I saw Father Logan." And once Otto says that publicly, Father Logan says, "Yes, I saw Otto." Mm. But the rest of what he's saying is a lie. Okay. Yep. So he. And that makes sense because yeah. you can say, I mean, he did see Father Otto in the church. You're allowed to say that much. Yeah. He That's said, I, well, especially because Otto said he saw him. So he said, okay. yes, I saw Otto at 1130. Gotcha. Yep. But the rest of what Otto's saying is not true. I just I love how Hitchcock say. makes sure he says the truth at every little tiny step along the way. Yeah. Except for what yeah. he can't say. And then he's silent. Even, even after Otto lies under oath about what happened, he says, all he says is, what he's saying is not true. He doesn't say why. That's he doesn't true. give a reason why he says that. He just says it's not true. It's just not true. And that's that's not even referring to the confession. It's just not true. So I, I have one quick little historical thing I just have to get in here because I'm yeah, a huge nerd. Sure. So <laughs> these are the walls of Quebec City. American forces were right outside of them in the Revolutionary War in 1775. Almost captured Qu Quebec City and we may have had Canada then. No way. Yeah. That's now, right. who knows what they would have done to the churches? Most yeah, of them that's weren't Catholic. True. But anyways, okay. So we want to go to the trial scenes next? Yeah. I didn't know that, Rob. That's interesting. 1612. <coughs> okay. Here's part of the trial. Is this your cassock? 1612. No, sir. Then uh, did you perhaps borrow this cassock from someone? No. It's not yours, and you did not borrow it. And yet it was found in your trunk. Someone must have put it there. Yes. Have you any idea who might have put this cassock in your trunk? I can't say. I can't say. Perfect. Even though he knows. The perfect line. And then once again... The uh, uh, crucifix in the back. The crucifix. Right? Yeah. Christ there's, the there's a Catholic in a courtroom. Is a Catholic city? It's a Catholic country. Crucifix in a courtroom. Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. Do you imagine? I can't say. You can see her heart changing there. Father Logan, when did you decide to become a priest? After the war. In becoming a priest, were you perhaps uh, trying to hide from something? I'd never thought of the priesthood as offering a hiding place. I understand you to mean that. Unlike many uh, many priests in the, the Lavender Mafia today, right? That's exactly right. Yep. The priesthood involves uh, certain responsibilities, certain moralities. Yes. Uh, you were aware of these responsibilities, these moralities? Yes. Uh, and yet you saw nothing wrong in having a clandestine meeting with a woman. Are you trying to imply that I was a priest? At that time, I was not a priest. Did you take into consideration that this woman was married? I wasn't aware that she was. And so you spent the whole day with this woman? Yes. We were good friends. I hadn't seen her in over two years. Such good friends that you spent a night with her? We were caught in a storm. Oh, the storm was the villain. Did you warn Madame Grandfort that perhaps her husband might not agree on that? As I said, I didn't know she was married. And uh, on discovering that she was, did you make any attempt to explain the situation to Monsieur Grandfort? No. Uh, but surely there is some contradiction between this, uh, uh, this secretiveness and uh, your vocation. I saw nothing wrong being caught in a storm. If there was nothing wrong, why did you have such a violent argument with Villette when he appeared next morning? Were you anxious to protect Madame Grandfort's reputation? Yes. Oh, then her reputation was in danger. You realized suddenly that there was something more than merely being caught in the storm. Villette made an insinuation. My argument with Villette had nothing to do with any sudden realization on my part. And you hit him? Yes, I did. In anger? Yes. You are capable of hitting a man when he merely intrudes upon a harmless situation. Then surely you are capable of far more violent action when that same man blackmails your good friend, Madame Grandfort. I'm not capable of murder. You would allow such a man to destroy Madame Grandfort's home as well as your career? 
No. You would go to such a man, and unable to control your temper, unable to face a public scandal, you would turn to physical force. No, I would not. So there's the end of that scene. Yeah, I was hoping to get to where he um, discusses um, the the testimony of Valette, not Valette, uh, Otto. Where like he they actually question him about Otto's testimony, and he and he keeps saying, cool. the, "Well, maybe that, that was just a that was the last scene I had." And uh, yeah, I mean, why don't you take why don't you take the control stick until you got to run, Anthony? Because um, I know you got to get to bed soon. So I want I want to go to the verdict, and I want to sh play that ending out because him walking out of the courtroom being accused, yeah, even that's... though the verdict comes in the way it does, is just it's uh, really so. Let's and we'll just remind everyone the reason he was um exonerated or found not guilty wasn't because anyone thought he wasn't guilty it was just they didn't believe there was enough, enough evidence yeah there wasn't yeah. enough it was all circumstantial evidence there wasn't any forensic evidence or anything and the uh, judge even know. adds basically in so many words you got off but i think you're guilty yeah let's go let, let, let's play the let's play the verdict and let's see oh, how explain all that guys we got bad news no Ah, uh, all right. They might bring us back on. Have we been off for a while? So no, they might let it go back up. Oh, because it was such a long clip, maybe. Yeah, we should keep the. That's my. We've fault. been off for a minute or or so. Ah, so what happens? Is it recommence? Let me see uh, here. Hang on. Sometimes they let you go back on, right? That stinks, man. Your stream has been temporarily blocked because we detected video belonging to someone else. Oh, um, bummer. It might come back on. Let me go see what I can find on Safari instead of. Uh... Well, the thing is, what I think what they detected. It's not that it's, it's from music. Amazon. It, they have the same movie it's on the YouTube. stream unavailable. Darn. This is 105 watching stream unavailable. It's we're still on locals though, right? Oh, we're not on locals. We can't be on locals until tomorrow. <laughs> till tomorrow. Um, okay, so I, I told everyone in the chat to just hold on. Um okay. Because it YouTube is telling me in the YouTube control center it says okay, it's no longer being blocked. We should be back up. Okay, we're back. <laughs> okay. YouTube is telling me in the YouTube control center. There we go. Okay. Okay, <laughs> we're, so we're back. back. <laughs> um do we want to try it? Oh man, we want to try one last scene. How do how do we get away with the whole show and then they just? It was a long one, maybe. It was a long one. It was three minutes. Okay, so let's let's go to the. So verdict. I'm right before the verdict, and maybe we we stop it uh, a little bit more often. So all right, mm. so we'll do the verdict and we'll stop it a little more often, and then Rob, you're gonna have to do the same thing you did last time at the end of this stream. You're gonna have to fight. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You're gonna have to fight. Maybe that, so. tell people to refresh their browser there too. I think yeah, most people saying we're back. Everybody's saying we're back. We're back. Okay, because I couldn't okay. we're back, we're back. Let me try this again. Still back. say it because it, it didn't have it back on mine. I would say refresh the browser. Yeah. I'm yeah, but I'm saying if you don't see us, refresh your browser. Okay, great. Still say it because it, it didn't have there you it. Go. Okay, so we should be Oops. Yeah, yeah, someone's saying it's funny. They block us for showing it yet. People are going to buy this movie because yeah, of it. we're promoting it. Yeah, but they'll once they so what will happen is Rob will have to fight that copyright. And we did this once before with um, uh, it was, it was movie or? no, it was the first one. It was um, uh, Man for All Seasons. Man for All Seasons. So okay. yeah, we so got the off two the oldest stream. movies <laughs> are the ones that we, we got doing. off the stream. And Rob just put it through and said like, oh, he 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 rushed it. And we were taking a gamble because if they deny your rush, like they have three days to respond. And if the, like if they deny it in those three days, your you channel can be gone. Whoa, yeah, really? you can nuke your channel. Yeah. Wow. We, took a chance. we know this is fair use. We're not playing the movie. This is fair use. There's nothing wrong with what yeah. we're doing. And all the no, makers are dead by now. 
right now. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, it's we're doing commentary throughout it. It's not. I mean, what is somebody going to take a few? Clips who has and... copyright stuff to? So I don't know who did this. Was it Universal or Fox? It was one. I, mean, of I guess people. someone's got to own. Someone bought the copyrights. I guess they have a right to it if they purchased them. Yeah. Yeah, it's not for free on YouTube. That's for sure. So I had to rent it. I had to pay four bucks to rent it. I bought. I I bought it for like I think five bucks. So. Okay, let's get to that uh, yeah, yeah, scene okay. and then how horrible it is as he exits the, the, the courtroom. So the jury's coming back. Yeah, I think if we just like talk over it when there's no when there's no um, <laughs> dialogue. <laughs> you guys Never. have heard of you, Never. Are you agreed on your verdict and who will speak for it? We are. How say you? Is Michael William Logan guilty of murder or not guilty? While we attach grave suspicion to the accused, we cannot find sufficient evidence to prove that he actually wielded the weapon that killed Monsieur Villette. Therefore, our verdict is not guilty. All right, why don't you pause it for a sec and we'll make sure that we don't play it too long. Yeah. And I want to play what the judge says because the judge really hammers well, down. And I, I think it might be the lead detective between this and when the judge says mentions like, what the jury did by just saying what they did yeah he says like why did they say that they've ruined him ruined his life yeah ruined his life okay let's try this again hearken to your verdict as the court recorded it you say michael william logan is not guilty so you say all yes 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 I thought they were going to come back with a guilty verdict. Me too. Yeah. I told you that Cassidy ruined him. Why couldn't they have said not guilty simply and let it go with that? Your lordship. Kind of made me feel uh, feel better about that lead detective. Yeah. yeah. That like he wasn't upset that their case wasn't strong enough. He's if yeah, he's, he's not guilty, he why, the why guy's couldn't he just yeah. shut up? <laughs> yeah. And then the judge hammers it down even worse. That's yeah. right. Agreed. I move that the prisoner be released. Michael Logan, while I have no doubt that the jury must have reached their conclusion in utmost fairness and solemn regard for justice, I cannot help expressing my personal disagreement with their verdict. Michael William Logan, you are hereby discharged. Everybody stand down. You want to keep going, Ant? Or? So, yeah. Leave it, leave it running. What was the hissing? That's already the booing starting. That's how they used to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because they can't make a scene in the courtroom. Right. Take off that court. collar. There you go. Like the whole city thinks he's guilty. <laughs> this is the, the ladies. Hard to blame the temptress. He's a true hunk. <laughs> so apparently, according to a previous comment up here, apparently Montgomery Cliff, the actor, was gay. No way. But someone, I, don't, I, I don't know anything about him, but someone did say that Montgomery Oh, Cliff, he seems so masculine and like, like really not that. I thought maybe the, the <laughs> this judge. This is like the OJ I mean, trial, uh, except he's actually innocent. <laughs> Uh, blocked again, guys. Oh, uh, see, this is why we got to stop him all frequently, huh? Nah, yeah. I don't even think we can play him. It's Just blocked. Hold on. We have to come up with a new. Yeah. Darn. Let me see. Okay, it still says temporary. Darn, really? Yeah. Oh, man, this might be the end of our series. No. We'll... How do... <laughs> Just this movie. What do we do? Just this movie? Yeah, we haven't had any issues yet. <laughs> Paul. Do you guys have on? Live, did but... you guys have on Christian Mario yesterday? Yes. Yeah. Was it fun? It was. It was. Really it was he's, he, yeah. I it, dude, I wouldn't be surprised really if he good. comes, if he becomes Catholic at some point. Was he the first Eastern Orthodox you've had on your show? No. We yeah, we didn't get here. into too much. Like, you know, we didn't where does he live? Is on? he here? In, is he here in Denver, Florida? Florida. He did last Florida. time. Right. Oh, it's still off. <laughs> Could this be it? Is he be getting nuked? <laughs> shouldn't have made that crack about him being gay <laughs> yeah maybe that was it 
What's that guy's name? Montgomery what? Montgomery Clift. Clift with a T. YouTube doesn't want Anthony to get any sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, uh, he he's in like the Tampa area. Okay. Hey, you know what we might be able to do, Rob? Um, play it at two times speed. Two times or or like 0. 0.75. Yeah. One, so like there's one. so if I change the aspect ratio. Like if I zoom in to where we lose like the corners, or if we change the speed, it won't. Det- it will. It won't see it at the same video that's in YouTube's catalog. Yeah. The problem with this one is it's copyrighted in YouTube's catalog that they have themselves. Oh, so like okay. the island. Um, well, they have. Okay, we're back. We should be back now. Okay. All right, guys. We are back. Yeah. So we were just discussing how we could go about this. <laughs> we were first of all, we were reading all of your comments, and, like we were putting them up on screen, laughing at you guys. You guys are all hilarious. Okay. We probably um, won't show any more video. Yeah. Let's not show any more. Okay, hey, not. real, real. Yeah. I just thought it was pretty, pretty, like just the similarities be- between Christ and the Sanhedrin uh, towards the the final scenes there. Now going forward, um, I all right because i do have to run um i would like to do the mission next what do you think sounds fine how are we going to get around this copyright stuff though i will screen record scenes from the mission but that i, I mean, can do is that going to help though not i'd have to do a lot of editing to them which is doable or the other option would be to in we could pre-record it and then no, I like the live audience. It's so much. So well, much yeah, we'd have to. We could pre-record it and premiere it and interact with the audience of the chat, but then we can't mm, throw stuff up. It's not the same thing. I like putting their comments up. I, I'd rather do that. We got. I mean, but is there this. less chance of it getting copyright tags if we do like how I, you know, because I was able to rip certain things from YouTube, send it to you ahead of time, but I don't know why um, that would help anything. If, if I like, I said, if I could zoom in on the video to where the image that we're putting up isn't the exact image youtube uh, has okay. their automatic sensors won't catch it someone we could still get a chat, later copy yeah right. someone in live said also mentioned either changing the speed or something like that yeah yeah, yeah. It, like, remember, play these, are, like, what, these, these aren't humans 5. catching us these are robots catching robots us. that's Correct. it yeah yeah which is why it stops when we stop playing the video mm. yeah fair use does protect us we'll be able to fight it and we're not going to get a strike on the channel we will be able to fight it it's you know we're going to get a copyright stop, strike and live, then, yeah so yeah, that would be one option, but then we can't throw comments up on screen. Which sometimes yeah, you guys have great questions. Yeah, no, we want to yeah, keep no, the live. Why don't, why don't we rip it ahead of why don't we rip our scenes ahead of time and then you can finagle them to get around the uh, copyright strike somehow? Look, we had one yeah. other time where they booted us, right? And it's not permanent. They no. they put you on a temporary block. We'll 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 figure it out. Right, I'm we'll not figure ending, Let's talk off yeah. the air about it so we can get back to the movie, huh? Um we'll figure, we'll right. figure it out. I'm going to fly, but I would like to do the island. Ne- I mean, I would like to do the mission next. That that would Sounds be good. good. Um, you guys finish out the show. Okay. I'm going to try and catch, catch a couple of hours. Do, this is like one of my favorite series that we do. And the pe- the fact that the people are watching the movies ahead of time. Yeah, that's awesome. The, so listen, if you don't do the mission, if you guys want to pick a different movie, just let me know which one we're doing. Well, let's, let's do the mission. Let's have everybody watch the mission. Probably most, probably half the viewers have already seen it. Probably 90% of the viewers have seen it, but Yeah, let's have everyone watch the mission before next time. And by the way, I mean, we're not saying everything in the movies that we're promoting is perfectly Catholic. But you're going to see a couple of things in the mission that is some really crazy modernism sprinkle. I mean, it's mostly good. There's a couple of crazy modernist things like when the Jesuits justify infanticide. We don't support that, obviously. And and certainly no 18th century Jesuit would have ever, ever, you know, justified infanticide. Um, but well, that'll be a good discussion point, right? Yeah, that's that'll a good be, question. Yeah, I just of, want people of, get we're not we're not saying everything in these movies is perfect, you know. No, part of the reason we do this is to point out some of the the silliness, right? Yeah, so it, yeah, like I kind of I kind of don't mind that that's in there because it's almost like we're warning people of okay, totally. look, if you watch this movie, yeah, we don't have to warn it. Right yeah, I just want yeah, but let's do the mission. I think everyone should watch that. Yeah, because well, it's it, there is some um that would be funny. <laughs> well, what what we are going to do? Trying. I'm trying. Is we're going to all watch? Um, what was it? Um, 
What was the movie of his you recommended, Father? Uh, like Labor Soldiers? No, no, no. Uh, oh, of Mel Gibson's? Yeah, I think I think if we got him, we should discuss um, um, the, the movie broke... about the pacifist. <laughs> I almost said Brokeback Mountain. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. I oh, I would have. That would have been, been, been a... the movie about the the, se- uh, the Seventh Day Adventist kid. Or... Yeah, yeah, that's um, uh, heartbreak. That's why. Oh, yeah, I... oh, no, something Ridge. Um, um, uh, Hacksaw Ridge. Hacksaw, Hacksaw Ridge. Ridge. Yeah. Hacksaw Hacksaw Ridge. Ridge. I don't know how I got <laughs> Brokeback Mountain out of the Hacksaw Ridge, but so we're gonna watch that one. So I've never we're... seen Brokeback Mountain, and I ever will. <laughs> so if <laughs> me, if funny. if Mel Please is ever watch available, is for real. <laughs> God's not dead. <laughs> you guys are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're gonna watch that one. So if Mel were to ever be available at any time, yeah, we'd be ready to do it. Let's oh yeah, it's got a that's schedule what I'm gonna change. Ask Ron okay. to come talk. So watch, keep that in your back pocket. Watch Hacksaw Ridge. If we, if he ever joined us last minute, that's what I'm asking to talk about. Broke Ridge Heartbreak. <laughs> 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 that's literally what we were saying, though. Like Heartbreak, Broke Mountain. <laughs> you know the USC. You know when that movie came out, the USCCB gave a good recommendation for it. No, Did not it? kidding. Not kidding. Oh, I might have to dig that up. Yeah, like if you get if you get Mel Gibson, you don't talk the pension. I mean, you could mention it. No, but... I mean USCCB said Brokeback Mountain was a good movie. Oh, of course they did. Jeez, are you kidding? Some of Peter's Pence probably helped paid for it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, um, all right, I'm gonna try and get some sleep. You guys wrap up. I right, will wrap it up. So, Mission is the next one, but everyone watch. Uh uh hacksaw ridge to keep that in the back yeah because that one might be on the fly that might be like a monday night we just goal, get a phone get call. Like, he, he's available yeah. let's go yeah so, oh yeah we right, just need thursday night we'll just pick it random night yeah all right let's just say you move your schedule around for mel gibson exactly you don't yeah. Yeah. Move I'll take a day I'm, trying. Work. I'm trying i'll take a day off of work so all right i'll see you boys okay see you ciao all right rob let's talk let's, um let's, let's see if you can figure out how to do this do not click end stream like leaves to there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna do without Anthony? I don't know. He's the one that always talks. Um, All right. So yeah, let's talk um, as he leaves. How similar that is to Christ. I mean, you see the fickleness of the crowd, obviously in the Gospels, and you see the fickleness of the crowd. That you know, this is clearly a culture that normally thinks priests are good, mm-hmm. and how quickly. Everyone just assumes he must be guilty because of the circumstantial evidence. Even in a Catholic culture, how quickly they turn on on Father Logan. But yeah, it's like the like the crowd shouting for you know crucify him, crucify him. Yep. And so the first person to put the first person whose conscience kicks in is Otto's wife at this point. I mean, she's the only one to know. She's actually the only one since the, since in Father Logan's brain, the seal has closed this off. Otto has already made it clear he's not going to out himself since he's willing to, you know, accuse a priest of something he did. The only other person alive on the planet at this point who knows this is Otto's wife. So Hitchcock knew the only person that could speak up at this point, I shouldn't say he knew this is written in there, would be Otto's wife. And then, but this is the madness of sin, you know. The devil always overplays his hand, and you often see this in the minds of criminals and narcissists and everybody. He pulls out his gun and shoots his own wife. Yeah. Um, regardless of the fact that uh, he's making himself to be capable of murder at that point, that's a good point. Again. Because Otto's wife wanted to crack earlier, but he stopped her. Yeah. I guess I missed that. When was that? It wasn't the courtroom. I, I don't think it was, it was. I don't think it was necessarily explicit. Uh, I don't know. And it, when was that? I, I don't want to go back and show it because we'll just get kicked again. Yeah. I, when was that, Lee? See if he can answer that in the live yeah. chat. Yeah, Lee. If you give us uh, maybe more detail, um, but while while you do that, can you imagine? Um, in a, can you imagine how much harder this would be for Father Logan if? he was a married priest and had a yeah. wife. He couldn't tell. Like, that's right. That's, that's another good argument for priestly celibacy. Right. There's just hundreds and hundreds of arguments for priestly celibacy. And here's another one. Yeah. How do you go back home and not tell your wife something like this? What's amazing is 
you don't really see the mind of the priest he lives with. The, the, you know, if, if you look at their faces, it seems pretty clear they think he's not capable of this, but they're not sure. So they can't really say anything, but you see this relief and this belief in Father Logan in their faces once everyone realizes, mm -hmm. ah, he wasn't the worst of all priests. He was the best of all priests for keeping this seal. That's what's yeah. that's the most exciting turnaround in this whole movie is who in the eyes of the whole city, including possibly the priest that he lives with, think of him as the worst priest. He immediately becomes the most heroic priest that all of a sudden he would rather not only take insults, but presumably even face the death penalty to keep the seal of confession. What a heroic priest. He would rather refrain from breaking the seal of confession than even live his own life on earth. That's, he got it. I mean, Hitchcock got the heart of the priesthood in this. Well, and then he puts himself in, in mortal danger at the end to yeah. try to help Otto. That's right. And so we don't, I mean, the city, I guess the audience already, the movie audience already knows that Father Logan's innocent, uh, both of the adultery and the murder at this point. But what they don't, what the uh, the city, the people who are in the city, including the cops, including the priests, including the people on the crime scene in that theater, they don't realize that Father Logan's innocent until Otto says, are you going to, what does he say? He, I don't think Otto realizes the priest is with all these people. And he yeah. says something along the lines, are you going to tell them about my confession? And you see Father Logan put his head down a little bit. Really, he shouldn't have even done that, but we'll get nitpicky on the whole thing. He, <laughs> he puts his head down a little bit and, you know, either the cops or the priest look at him and then everyone just immediately realizes, ah, I mean, it's everyone on the scene of that, um, everyone on the crime scene all of a sudden realizes, maybe because it's a Catholic city, they all realize instantaneously Father Logan is not only not a murderer, he has kept the seal of confession <coughs> Of a murder and that's why he couldn't say anything everyone gets it immediately can um can a priest discuss anything like could could father logan have discussed this with another priest or no we his we superior at all another priest i mean one of the examples of keeping the seal they used to give in old school seminaries before vatican ii maybe a few seminaries after vatican ii this is the example they gave you have to remember there used to be numerous priests in a rectory so let's say you're in a rectory there's five priests at the table like this place Let's say you had evening confessions at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Come, the, one of the priests was hearing confessions. He comes and sits down at the table. Hey, Father O'Sullivan, long line in the confessional tonight? No, just one adultery. And then the meal served, and one of the house servants, let's say it's an Irish house servant in 1940s Chicago, uh, she's serving the table, and then on her way out, of serving the priest, she's like, Father O'Sullivan, thanks for hearing my confession tonight. Who just broke the seal? He did. Mm -hmm. He broke the seal, even though she said, thanks for hearing it. So if he just sat down, hey, was there a long line in confessions? No, but one big fish, one adultery tonight. And it happened to be the servant. Well, he broke the seal. So we're not allowed to discuss um, anything with any other priest at all because of cases like that. Now we can talk generalities like, hey, there's a lot of men confessing pornography. Do you have any good penances? Like, what works to help men reduce this? Oh, covenant eyes. Have you heard of this? You know, if there's if there's a sin that is so unbelievably common, I mean it can't be super specific, but if there's some sins that are really, really, really common, you can discuss generalities for how to reduce say near occasion of sin and things like that um but it has to be really broad generalities it can never be specific cases you know because okay. if you said uh like we were you know we were talking a lot about ivf this week if you're like hey can you help me with a so i'm dealing with a parishioner in the confessional who's twice annulled and is now getting ivf well guess what how many parishioners in the parish are twice annulled and dealing with ivf mm -hmm. like you just revealed and i I made that story up. I don't know anyone in that. So I don't want people to think I'm talking from the confessional either. Right. But if you said something random like that, that, or I shouldn't say random, but that specific, well, the other priest is going to know who you're talking about. Guess what? You just broke the seal. Because even the new code of canon law says the seal is broken if the priest allows. Notice it doesn't say executes. If the priest allows in another's mind penitent to be connected to sin. Allows penitent to be connected to sin. So 
that means even like relatively passive behavior can can be that like let's say a mom came up to me and it's like hey i know my son went to confession did he confess smoking pot and i'm like Arr. i just <laughs> i just answered it right yeah. you know so you no know, we can't do any any anything that allows a connection is a break of the seal including with other priests um one person here had, had a great question we hear so much about how bad catechesis was before the council but yet Hitchcock, who apparently was a practicing Catholic, I mean, he got all of this so so right. I mean, this film, as far as I could tell, didn't have any sort of error in it at all. I think most normie Catholics who are not traditionalists, I don't think they say catechesis was bad before Vatican II. I think this is their new their new answer is, yeah, they had good catechesis, but they didn't have a relationship with Jesus. I think everybody admits they had great catechesis. Now, I don't buy the no relationship with Jesus thing hmm. either anymore. But um, catechesis was a lot better than it is now. And I think that's that's one reason he got even the really specific stuff, like how Father Logan at the breakfast table had to stand up and go to the meeting that he uh, was originally scheduled to before he, quote unquote, knew Mr. Vallette was murdered. So I think, no, I think Catholics before Vatican II were actually very well catechized. And not all of them, but many of them were we're better catechized than nowadays. Do you think, um, do you think Keller's confession at the end was, was valid? So we have to assume it is, you know, we, the, the beautiful thing is, I think it was like an 11th or 12th century debate between imperfect and perfect contrition. Um, God gives a lot of graces at the very end of someone's life. So even if he didn't have perfect contrition, I think we can assume he had imperfect contrition. I mean, it's sort of silly to, I guess, discuss a movie. We don't, you know, right. I mean, no, 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 he's hard, but, but I mean, if this was real life and someone died in my arms and I gave him, you know, he was sorry and I gave him absolution. I mean, God is looking for reasons to save us, not to condemn us. He really is. And if it happens, you die in a priest's arm who gives you absolution. That's so rare <laughs> that you can say somehow in divine providence, that was, that was made to be, you know, or at least, mm -hmm. at least allowed to be. So I think he did. And if I remember correctly, did he, I think the, his priest friend gave Otto's wife absolution. I think they both died getting absolution. Didn't they? He, well, he himself, I think gave absolution to father Logan to, did. Yeah. To, to the wife who gave it. I think we Otto hear him say that. father Logan as well. Oh, both of them. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what a beautiful story of forgiving one's enemies right there that, that Christ forgave their sins through him mm -hmm. in all of that. Um, so let's go, let's just, we shouldn't play it, but let's re let's just see if we can recall the final scene. Um, the cops have to shoot Otto. He's dying. Father Logan goes over there. Um, I think he gives him absolution. Is that right? Yeah. Any yeah, thoughts yeah. on that? Um, well, yeah, like you, this whole movie really does does uh, show Father Logan to be a type of Christ. I mean, like you yes. like what you brought up earlier with with that scene with the Christ carrying his cross um, while while Father Logan was was walking, uh, and then the the scene of of the crucifix in the courtroom, and now now Father Logan giving absolution, like you said, to his to his very enemies. It's a it's amazing what what Hitchcock did, honestly. Now that I really think about it, yeah. I watched Count of Monte Cristo a couple weeks ago, and if you remember in the scene of the jail, it's like God will give me justice, right? And um, what's amazing about this movie, I confess, is you do see God exonerate him through the circumstances of life, um, even though he won't. Uh, Anthony has I want. <laughs> I was just going to say it got really quiet here. <laughs> it's been a really quiet five minutes here. Yeah. Um, is it, is it, Anthony, are you in bed just probably texting? Um, no, I think he, he really is this other image of Christ. And he has just like Jesus on the cross as they're mocking him to come down. Um, thanks, Phil. That's really nice. Um, as they're mocking Christ to come down from the cross, even though Jesus is God, as a human, he trusts God to vindicate him, to exonerate him. And this is what you see is 
you see, Father Logan has the power to just turn everything around. He could have said at the human level on the stand, look, this clown came to me right after murdering. Here's the evidence. Here's the cassock. Here's what happened in the church. Here was his motive. He was stealing. He came to me. He's been working for us. He was poor. Like he had the power to probably turn everything around on its head on this auto guy. And it's so brilliant that Hitchcock picked a guy who wasn't, I mean, Otto's not some smart man. He was, a no. you know, he, he, Logan could have easily smoked him in the courtroom with all the evidence, but he doesn't use his power just as Christ on the cross doesn't use his power as God. He trusts in God to vindicate him, to exonerate him. This is why I think of the scene in Monte Cristo, God will give me justice. Um, and, and Jesus' vindication is the resurrection. And so what you see, Father Logan doesn't know when it's going to, maybe it's going to be after he dies. Yeah. Maybe it's going to be after 20 years in prison. Maybe, you know, we don't really know. But the priest, under false accusations, often has to trust entirely in God, not himself, for his vindication or exoneration. Um, you you just saying that, uh, yes, Father Logan, like you said, could have could have turned the tables on on Otto and in and could have saved himself and convicted Otto, but that probably would have just hardened Otto's heart. So in, in yeah. instead, he offers himself up almost as a sacrifice, yes. and in the end, saves Otto's soul. That's right. I mean, he would have lost his own by breaking the seal. And by breaking the seal, he would have harmed many Catholics' faith in the town, not just Otto's, but certainly Otto would have been one of those. Would Otto have made that quiet confession at the end to a priest who'd broken the seal? No. Mm -hmm. So we, I mean, I think we, I think we can assume that a couple souls got saved, namely Otto and his wife. Hopefully, uh, that gal, mm -hmm. the aunt, uh, uh, what's her name? The one, the, that, the, the temptress, the minx. The temptress. Hopefully, she <laughs> led to a good confession. But no, you made a great point. I mean, so many aspects of the life of Jesus is lived out in it. Forgive them, Father, for they know what, no, not they know not what they do. That. Jesus forgiving his enemies on the cross, Spe not just all of humanity, but specifically his enemies in a specific way. You see Father Logan have to live out a supernatural charity, not just for everybody in the town, but in a specific way for his enemies and the particular decisions he makes to not break the seal. <laughs> Anthony's still chiming in. Um, in light of this movie, what would you say to those who, who are, well, now really seemingly like they're attacking the seal of confession especially through through um through legislation you know legislation um saying that it protects predators in the church mm -hmm. yeah that's a great question uh, is the seal protecting uh predators hiding within the church i remember like five six seven years ago i think it was steve skojek at one peter five or maybe ann barnhart one of them was was talking about how some predator priests will go to other priests so as to squirrel themselves away into their secret lifestyles. I imagine that's probably happened um, on, on some occasions. I think the really, really bad priests doing stuff like that, just um, they don't care about the seal of confession anyway. And most of them are, you know, able to um, do such masterful grooming or they're in such major cahoots with Satan and satanic ritual abuse that they don't have to have a safety net um, within, like, you know, using a regular priest like that. May maybe they would do that to shut the priest up if a priest saw something. Um, but I think most of the really intense predators using things like SRA, um, satanic ritual abuse that they have even caught real Catholic priests doing, mm -hmm. they're not going to be really be messing with it. Now, the question of these countries that are turning against the seal of confession, I think that's a pretext. I think the countries trying to attack the seal of confession are using um, priest child scandal abuse as a pretext. I don't think they really care about um, these predator cases. I think it's um, just an attack on the priesthood. And one thing for even me, who always delineates between like liberal priests and neoconservative, non traditional priests and traditional priests. One thing I can say about most priests in that, not everyone, but most priests in the spectrum of those three, most priests take the seal of confession actually quite seriously. I mean, I know liberal priests, I know conservative priests who don't do the Latin mass, and I know Latin mass priests. And almost everybody in all three, that's one nice thing about the priest, unless we're talking about the SRA priests, right? right? Most priests within that bandwidth, even liberals, 
they take the seal pretty seriously. So, I mean, not to ask you for a prediction, but if legislation were to come down that really does provide legal penalties to priests who don't break the seal, you you think most will will hold true then? I really do. And, and I mean, most of your audience probably knows me. I don't speak well of priests very often. I don't like most priests and most priests don't like me. But even even me, who doesn't have a lot to good things to say about priests, will tell you most priests would rather go to jail than. And the reason I say I don't like most priests, most priests don't like me is to. So, you know, the backdrop against how radical it is that I'm saying that even me am admitting most priests would rather go to prison than break the seal of confession. Even when now he, in 2024. When he says SRA priests, it's priests who commit satanic, satanic ritual abuse. abuse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony says you're stuck with us because you have no priest for Exactly. Us. That's totally right. No, I have a um, couple, but most, yeah, my, most of my friends are lay people like you guys. That is just in dealing with this movie, uh, <laughs> Father Logan had, I mean, besides the seal of confession, um, which prevented him even from talking with his fellow priests, but like he really had no one, you know, besides his fellow priests to not to confide in, but to, to just, right. you know, help him through anything. And nowadays, how many parishes have three priests there? Most parishes share a priest with one or two other parishes. I can't well, imagine how lonely that is. Yeah, and there's a couple questions in there. I mean, that's where I'm glad someone in the, in the live chat about an hour, hour and a half ago asked about, you know, actually someone more recently said, can you discuss this with other priests? But you see that at the kitchen table that, you know, priestly fraternity is a really great thing to have. And that's where before Vatican II, there was often many priests in just one parish. They would never try to have one pair. I mean, it was always numerous priests in a parish. So that was a lot healthier before Vatican II. There was community, there was fraternity, there was recreation. But when it came to confession, you're on your own. That's that's one of those things where, again, you can never, ever, ever discuss discuss a, a confession, even with a bunch of priests hanging out around, having some, uh, you know, smokes and whiskey. You really you can never, ever discuss that. So fraternity only goes so far. Confession, you're on your own. And that's where Hitchcock really picked the perfect sacrament, because this mm -hmm. is the sacrament. The priest walks alone with Jesus. That's why he, you see from, you know, the top of the uh, the church, Jesus carrying his cross, the, the silhouette of Jesus carrying his cross, and then Father Logan down there. Confession is just one of those things where you're really, really alone. Um, and if you get a false accusation from the confessional, you know, you might be able to say that's not true, but you, you can't even say, um, but here's what the person was really confessing. I mean, we are so, we are really sitting ducks. In fact, before Vatican II, not only was the seal off limits, you couldn't even discuss spiritual direction. Now, if you discuss spiritual direction, you weren't excommunicated in the same way that if you, you know, broke the seal of confession. But really, the tradition of the church is we are never, ever even to speak of spiritual direction with one person with another. If we mm. do, it's really bad. You're not excommunicated. You haven't broken the seal, but it's really bad form. And so as I always say, we never do cross, we never do cross pollinization, spiritual direction. That's just a very bad thing, you know? Okay. Like, I'll give you an example. If, I mean, it's really better for a priest to give spiritual direction to a man. And like a lot of time women approach us for spiritual direction. I knew a priest once and he said, I, I will only give spiritual direction to a woman if she brings her husband. And that wasn't mm -hmm. just for propriety's sake. That's because he wanted the man to be leading the family spiritually. And too often women come to priests for spiritual direction because they want to pump up their devotions or just, you know, talk about their lives, but it's all fine. I'm not saying that's bad. But when you say, I'm only giving spiritual direction if you bring your husband, that brings him along to see where is he at with the faith? Is he the spiritual yeah. leader of the family? Is he willing to, you know, so it's not just for propriety's sake to bring him along, but in the in the case, and I don't even do spiritual direction anymore, but when when I had to do spiritual direction between say man and woman at different times, the goal really even then should be you don't do cross pollinization spiritually. You don't say, well, your husband said this, your wife said this. Really, you should listen to the person to give them advice. So the priest is truly a sacred counselor, even outside the confessional. You really, the priest should understand everything he has to be under lawyer client privilege um, in, in almost every dealing uh, with, with people.
in an ideal situation would do you think it's proper to say that really a husband should be the spiritual director of his wife yeah i i mean oh boy uh people go look at my blog um there was there's a traditional priest and um he's mess he's messing up a lot of people's lives uh right now and i'm not going to say his name on the air and i didn't put his name on this blog but if you go look at padre peregrino um it's about basically toxic religion can even happen in the traditional world and i'm much more in favor of just finding a regular confessor not a spiritual director because so many funky things are happening in fact you see in the movie a little bit of this like she doesn't tell father logan she's married but why does she want this special relationship with the priest mm. you know and and so I'm just of the opinion at this point with so much manipulation, both of the spiritual director and the directee at different times, you really just need a regular confessor, not a spiritual director. Because what I keep seeing is there, um, there are, okay, I might, I might take some heat from this, but I'm just going to answer your question directly. Yeah, I do think um, uh, if the husband is well formed, he should be the spiritual director to the wife, but not in the sense of like, you know, 17th century Carmelite obedience, <laughs> right? Like you must do that. I put you right. under an obedient, like some trad men talk to their wives, like they're their children. I'm not in favor of that. Right. Uh, but I do think that some women who don't have strong husbands go and they seek a traditional priest and they like the obedience they get. They like being told what to do. They kind of even like uh, being talked down to, because maybe if their husband's kind of a wimp, ooh, I've I found this tough traditional priest who's telling me what to do now. And I see this stuff and I'm like, this is getting weird. Just have a confessor. You don't need some bossy priest who's your emotional boyfriend because your husband's not interested in the Catholic faith. Yeah, you're gonna catch flack from both sides for that. That's awesome. For both sides. Yep. <laughs> no, I mean, and I'm seeing it in the traditional world too. So that's one reason I don't have a lot of friends even in the traditional world is I, I call out the problems there too. Yeah. Someone put a, I'm not going to put the comment up because it, it mentions a person, but yeah, they have a point. That's how you end up with, with certain priests that get into two bad situations. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and this is, you know, there's a protection in the confessional, um, not just protecting women and children from bad priests, but it also protects priests from false accusations. I mean, the the geography of the old school confessional was so perfect. Why, why, why in the world did did anybody think it was a good idea to take away um, the wall that's between priest and penitent? You know, because even if priests were all as holy as the apostles, you're still protected from false accusations in there. You're protected from all kinds of temptation. They're both protected from temptations, you know? So the old school geography of a confessional with a wall, a screen between people um, clearly was from God is a very mm. good idea, you know? Yeah. Um, but anyway, back to the movie, I, I really agree with you, Rob, that this is a, um, he's quite, quite an image of Christ through and through and just as Jesus doesn't have to say a lot of words, I mean, we know from Isaiah that Jesus was led to the slaughter as a lamb not opens not its mouth. You don't really see a lot of words from Father Logan. I mean, the most I think he speaks is on the is on the stand when he's required to speak. But what a strong character with so few words, except for mm -hmm. uh, when he has to go to court and answer things, you know. And that's um, that's that's a a really strong, beautiful priest right there, a man who's able to to do the right thing. And, and really the drama happens in the silence. It's what he doesn't say. That's what's so amazing. The, um, the, the drama of that movie is a priest not talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, uh, the two people <laughs> that you could consider villains, including the, the one Anthony certainly does. They're the <laughs> two, that, they're the two that talk the most throughout the whole movie. Mm -hmm. Otto yeah. and Otto and Ruth. Yeah. Um, and I do love when the detectives and the cops and the priest, I, maybe I mentioned this 15 minutes ago. Another one of my favorite scenes in the movie is when the cops and the detectives and the priests, you see this sigh of relief 
almost like they all wanted to believe Father Logan was innocent, but they couldn't believe it because of the evidence. And then everything, it's like all the stars align instantaneously. Then they understand why he didn't answer, why this happened in court, why Otto shot his wife. Like mm -hmm. everything immediately makes sense, not only in the audience's eyes, but even in the eyes of everyone who's on the set or acting or whatever, each character in the movie, the cops, the detectives, the other priests, the people at the hotel or the theater where the shooting takes place. They just love how everyone finally understands. I mean, and once again, it's his silence that exonerates him. It's not like he has to say, oh, no, no, everyone, you all misunderstand me. Well, that wouldn't, that maybe worked on a couple people, but just what, what gets shaken out in divine providence is the greatest exoneration there. Um, and we see that in the lives of a lot of the saints, a lot of, you know, there was a pregnant woman walking around ours claiming that, uh, John Vianney got her pregnant and he decided not to answer. He just decided he was going to let the holiness of his life answer that. And it did. Eventually no one believed her. No one could believe John Vianney of ours would do that because of the holiness of his life. He let his holiness become his vindication. He didn't even, he didn't even argue with her. Yeah, I mean, once again, another champion of con of the sacrament of confession right there. That's right, yeah. And I do think as we see, I mean, we're going to see governments move against the seal of confession, and really it's not it's not out of seeking justice. It's not out of seeking child predators. It's going to be simply an attack of the priesthood. And I really do think most, in, most bishops in the nation and in the world, even in liberal places like Australia, I think even most bishops, again, a group I don't usually do speak very well of, I think most people are going to attempt to protect um, the seal. And, and probably this is why governments aren't going to succeed, because when Catholics band together to do the right thing, as they will on the seal of confession, the governments aren't going to get anywhere. This, is, this really shows why we don't have anything to be afraid of as Catholics if we do the right thing as traditional Catholics have always done. And if we, and if we do go to prison... Great. We have we have saints like St. John Nepomucene, who is executed by the king for not explaining the queen's confession, thrown into a river. Uh, and I think Czechoslovakia. So we have we have martyrs of the confessional. We have precedent to say this is worth dying for. St. John Nepomucene. I think you bring up a good point. I think if governments really do come down hard on it, they're. Mm -hmm that's got to be the biggest mistake they could make because right now with all the division in the church, yep. something like that could really unite all the different sides. That's right. Yeah. Even liberal Catholics are going to be behind that. I think we might have to tell Anthony, we can't do the mission next. Because <laughs> People are paying for the, what movie people they want. Have, people are paying for Beckett and I do love Beckett. That's funny. You did, That was the one movie you were like ready to go with. I, yeah, that's the, I want to do that at some point during the series. Have you warmed up to this series? In th this series has has become honestly my some of my favorite podcasts we've done not not only because i've so i'm not a big movie guy never really have been but these movies that we've watched like a man for all seasons and now i confess are definitely probably two of my top five becca being in, in the top five too but even the island um i do love russian cinema just because of my education but i mean that movie's right up there um the padre pia ones it was yeah but the movies i've loved but just the can the conversations we've had and some of the the subjects we've dived into because of it have been awesome so i, I really love the series yeah sorry i got cranky earlier for people who uh weren't looking at the text between anthony and rob and me <laughs> anthony he knew he had to leave early because he got called into work but then because i was remembering how i think in december he got sick and wanted he was to, sick he wanted to switch the days uh, and I took a unisom last night, which is really a bad idea. So I was like, uh, fine, you guys don't want to do the series. Fine. I'm out of here. <laughs> and, and, and you guys are like, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I mean, talk about emotional women. I act, I was like, fine, you guys don't want to do the series. I'm done. <laughs> you guys talked me off the ledge. No, but really, because it was like the second one he was rescheduling or something. I was like, I thought you guys were just doing it for me. And this is only four. So that's like half of them. That would be half. So I was like, right. I'm out of here. If you guys are doing this for me instead of your audience, I'm out of here. But no, y'all convinced me you, you like doing it. So it, and not to uh, not to say anything think. bad about our audience, but I'm not. I, obviously, we do it for, for everyone who watches. But at this point, I even if we didn't do this as a podcast, even if we just the three of us wanted to watch a movie and have a discussion between the yeah. three of us. That would, I'd still love that. Well, that's why I was upset today. Cause I, I enjoy this. I, I was, uh, 
that's why I thought, oh man, if this is just work for you guys and you'd rather talk your normal podcast, let's just cancel it. But I, I enjoy it because I love movies. Um, there's just, there's so many things you can extrapolate from a movie like this that is Catholic. There's so many things you can learn about Catholicism. Um, okay. So we can probably wrap it up. So mission is next time. The basics of the mission. Most people know this. Now I should tell people before they watch it, even the Wikipedia page is very clear. This isn't historical fiction. Um, I mean, it's so, so loosely based on anything that happened. We can't even define it as historical fiction because it's very far from even a similar event. So you really got to see this movie as fiction, but it does capture some of the spirit of the 17th century um, South American Jesuits, this heroic missionary spirit um, to go to convert all lands. Um, Robert De Niro's penance will bring you to tears. Uh, I really, I really do love the mission, even though we should consider it fully fiction, not historical fiction. Um, you're going to see things get wonky towards the end as far as people's understanding of obedience. But again, the people in the 1980s, they had writing this was post Vatican II liberal um, uh, liberation theology Jesuits on the set helping them write this. So considering that liberation theologian Jesuits helped them make this in the 1980s, it's a it's a it's a phenomenal movie, despite or even because of the fact they're able to triumph over the liberation theology. A little bit of liberation theology comes in there, but for the most part, it's pretty accurate on how not the storyline, but how Jesuits in the in the 17th or 18th century would have um, had this love of the people to to convert them and bring them to Christ mm -hmm. in South America. Then the 17th century Jesuits. I mean, they're that's the Jesuit order. The Protestants make all the crazy conspiracy theories about mm -hmm. because they were, I mean, they were like the Pope's stormtroopers. They can, you know, they converted yeah. the new world. They almost converted Protestant Europe, bef you know, before yeah. the, the French revolution and stuff. Like it's an entirely different order than the Jesuits we know today. And they were also, even within the Catholic church by the 18th century, they were seen to have too much power and intelligence. Yeah. That's why they were able to convince a Pope to suppress them for, I think it was 50, 60, 70 years. It, it, um, it's kind of what caused the whole Jansenist thing too. Is the... That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was Father Colombier, who was the director for St. Margaret Mary, who, who was given the entire um, sacred heart apparition to, mm -hmm. to to stave off Jansenism, actually. So the Jesuits were actually central to staving off Jansenism. That's very different with the, you know, the Jesuits pushing for presumption now is not the same as the Jesuits then uh, pushing for the sacred heart devotion. These are very different things. Because um, yeah. even our Lord said to St. Margaret Mary, um, behold the heart that is so loved man and is so, how did he say, I think offended by man. You know, you're not going to hear Jesuits nowadays talk about how the sacred heart is offended by man's sin. I mean, a few will like father McTague and some other good Jesuits, but anyway, I've rambled too long. The mission is the next movie. It's a great movie. You got to see past some of the crazy things Jesuits in the 17th century would have never said like justifying infanticide, but those are really small little parts of the movie. All in all, great movie, great actors, tremendous scenes of penance and conversion and forgiveness and the heroic, approach they had to the missions so um oh should we do is that i don't want to do that in holy week though uh oh that because the last so the last actually, thursday oh, of the month is holy thursday so maybe should we wait till um should we skip a month or what are we going to do uh if it's either, holy thursday i don't want to do it holy thursday that night because we're all going to be you, at mass would you want to do it the Thursday before or the Thursday after, or do you Let's want to do wait the until after. Let's do it Easter Thursday. Okay. Can we do that? I'm fine with that. Yeah. I wonder if Anthony's still watching us from bed. So we'll just we'll let him know. So let's, let's switch it to Easter Thursday. Sounds good. We'll do that. All right. So the, so everyone, well, if you can watch the mission before Easter Thursday mm -hmm. and, uh, watch, uh, the other one, the Mel Gibson one, the one we couldn't think oh, of. Oh, yeah, Hacksaw Ridge. Well, watch Hacksaw Ridge if you get a chance because we you might get 10 minutes of warning <laughs> before that stream happens. I'd love to get him on. We'll see what happens. But yeah. uh anyways, yeah, uh, thank you so much for coming on, Father. Thanks for having me. This is a, this is a lot of fun. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, have a good night, everyone. You thank you. Good night. Mm -hmm.